and reset. There you go. Hola, amigos y amigas. Yo me llamo es Huesto Enrico y ella, ella llamas, llamas Raquel. Es Huesta Raquel. Huesta Raquel. Huesta Raquel. Why aren't cognitive functions like astrology? So somebody came in this morning, uh, Robert Gannon, I believe his name is, and asked me this question, and I wasn't really in the mood to go into a big explanation about it at the moment, at that moment. And I, I kind of short shrifted him uh, a proper response. Who's Wester Rachel? That's this one. Yeah, Wester. Cuesta Raquel. Raquel. Sí, o oh, sí. sí. Este es Cuesta este es Raquel. Es mi nom, nom, nombre. nombre. It is your nombre. Bacata. Okay. De español. Cool. The thing is, if you're looking to falsify it, um, the answer is, you know, Cognitive functions are a couple of things at once. Foremost, they're, before anything else, a taxonomy of reality. And in the same sense that you can taxonomy animal species correctly or incorrectly, that is to say, it is the case that it's better, it makes more sense to put mammals with other mammals than it does with, say, like, uh, well, let's put whales with reptiles because they're not fish, but they live in the water, right? <laughs> so, you know, in other words, is it possible to falsify taxonomy like that? Well, no, it's not. But that's not how we understand observational taxonomies. Mm -hmm. So to a certain extent, common functions comprises an observational taxonomy. And to observe how that works, we can start with the example of the person in Hawaii, man and a woman both standing in Hawaii, looking at some orchid plants, okay? Since I had a problem with pineapples earlier. Orchid plants, and the man says to the woman, if it freezes today, these orchid plants will die. Now, how you respond to that tells you somewhat about whether you're a meta-analyst, an analyst, an executive, or an executor. <laughs> so, meta-analysts or analysts are both likely to uh, at least consider the frame of reference, which is to say, but it's not going to freeze. Mm -hmm. All right. And there's no disputing that, but it's not going to freeze is a different response than say, well, yeah, that's probably true, right? Mm -hmm. Or actually, that's not true. Uh, these orchids are frost resistant, a different sort of response than, mm -hmm. but it's not going to freeze. Um, another kind of response might be, okay, and where are you going with this? Right, you know, waiting for more information, waiting mm -hmm. to receive more information. I know me personally, I would ask, Well, we're in Hawaii, why would they freeze? Right, so, um, if you are a map type, first of all, which is to say, any DOM, NI DOM, TI DOM, or FE DOM, you're likely to question whether the appropriate map is being used here to some extent. Like, hold on, we're in Hawaii. Why are you talking about it freezing? Um, are you sure you've got the right map for the territory? Mm -hmm. If you are a uh, an SE DOM, an SI DOM, a TE DOM, or an FE, FI DOM, you're much more likely to do something like this. SI DOM might say, um, well, they've never died. Our orchids at home never died, and it gets cold there. Um, and SE DOM might say, well, let's put them inside. A TE DOM might say, um, 
Well, that's true. But that could be useful. Uh, you know, actually, um, maybe we could use some quality of this frost to preserve the flowers and sell the flowers separately from the plants if they die. Which the Edom might say that. And if I Dom might say, but I love those orchid plants. Let's move them inside. Or an FI Dom might say, um, do you think that uh, if we, let's say INFP, do you think if we put a, a tarp over it, it would protect it? Or any number of other things. They might say, um, that'll never happen. Uh, my my precious orchids are too tough to die. They're so, so great orchids. So there's a set kinds of responses that people can, can give to that situation. Mm -hmm. And a finite number of kinds of responses, right? Like, uh, whatever, if you're, an, if you're an NE user, especially any tool or something, if you're an INTP, you will say, well, what about me? I can say me, I can say me, I can say me, and you throw a shit ton of stuff at me. But they would all fit into a couple of different categories. Either a, 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 a receiving response, which is probably going to ask a question like, um, you know, well, where are you going with this or something? So when Rachel said the question she'd likely ask, she probably wouldn't actually ask that question. She'd probably think that question mm. and go, okay, and, you know, or something like that. Wait to see where you're going with it. Yeah, I would. Um, a TI yeah, person like might say, but it's not going to freeze. The person is most likely to say, but it's not going to freeze, is somebody probably with TI in the one or second slot, for second slot. And the reason for this is because um, TI is the part of attention that considers unmaterialized realities. So if I say, if it freezes, then the tomatoes will die. It's an unmaterialized reality. In other words, it's the map to a territory you're not in. Mm -hmm. So the only people who you know, uh, meta analysts will go, um, check the map, check the ter territory. Is this the appropriate map for this territory? Um, analysts will go, check the map, check the territory, use the map to navigate the territory. Uh, executives will go, check the territory, check the map, uh, navigate the territory, check the map to see that you've navigated it correctly. And executors will go, check the territory, um, distrust the map, and then navigate the territory, and um, So, you know, like my dad, for example, who's an executor, a situation like this, um, well, he, he made a comment about some, some uh, Marvel comics thing. Basically, he, he pulled a Andy Rooney. Well, I don't like these yeah. new things. Yeah. They're different than the old things. I made the mistake of trying to sort of bridge the NI gap, which is to say, well, you might be right, Dad, that these lack content, continuity, but con continuity? Is that con continuity. Continuity. I don't yeah, want to put a nig in there. I don't know why. Anyway, continuity. But um, I think that's because you're looking at this thing that's on Disney Plus. It's a, probably a TV show like The right. Mandalorian. And so they've replaced some of the characters from the movies with the people in the TV show. I was trying to explain this concept to him, right? Didn't matter because he has his own map that he's made mm -hmm. that's not related to any kind of universal mapping. And he's got his own territory that he's defined according to how he wants to define it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, 
there's a couple of spots where I was trying to convey, like when I was also trying to convey, this is the equivalent to. So I was saying, oh, there is no. There, I was saying, look, this is like imagine if the Harry Potter movies, right, um, made a TV show, and um, they replaced, they kept Harry Potter, the main actor for that, but replaced the other actors with different people. But, and he said, oh, they made a TV show from Harry Potter? I said, no, Dad. Um, it's a hypothetical. Because, of course, what's he doing? He's he's not defaulting to any... He's ignoring an immaterialized reality. Yeah, he right? just sees this TV show that's about something to do with the Winter Soldier and someone else, and he has no idea anything about the story. Well... Of course, there's backstory and stuff to it. Of course, there's continuity, but you have to be fans of the... Right. He just sees the ads, concludes from his yeah. SI experience that there's nothing but explosions and automatic weapons. Right. And that there's no story to it. And um, the fact that he's not actually experienced the movie itself doesn't matter because yeah. that will require some sense that the NI whole is greater than your experience, which is NI polar, you know? And by the way, we saw nobody today. Yes, we saw nobody today. It was really nice to be with Eric in a theater. We'd never been um, to a movie in a theater before. And the seats were so nice. I got to lay lay back. And um, we didn't have to wear masks because we got food. <laughs> um, well, I don't think you understand what the word hoax means, question mark. Do I know what type Jordan Peterson is? Uh, I'm pretty sure he's an ENTJ. The movie was good. Um, we gave it a 4 out of 5. Well, I gave it a 4 out of 5. Eric gave it a 4.25 out of 5. Um, there were just some plot holes that could be looked over. There was some iffy writing, basically. Yeah. Um, so who's faking it, then? What do you mean by fake? Is it counterfeit? Am I am I pretending to talk about cognitive functions? Or am I actually talking about cognitive functions? Or the things I'm talking about are pretend. Except as I just explained, of course, it's as simple as people respond to the same situation in different ways, right? Yeah. Okay, question mark. You know what you are searching for? Timeout corner. And good news, you found it, Cloud. Boom. So, you know, go fuck yourself. Um, um, I think that Jordan Peterson is an ENTJ. That's my personal opinion. Well, the idea that you call it fake is just a silly, not understanding words, right? <laughs> it's like you can call it a lot of things. You could say that a system makes sense. You could say it doesn't make sense. You could say. It understands what it's trying to do and be. You can say here are shortcomings, here are its limitations, here are its advantages, whatever. But psychology in general is an attempt to describe human beings in ways that universalize to some extent. In other words, you're not just a unique, totally unique snowflake, entirely yourself, um, not representative of any patterns, but that in fact you do represent certain patterns. Big Five attempts to represent those patterns as attributes, which are, is a metaphor, of course. People don't have attributes, they execute processes. So, I mean, I think to correctly understand cognitive functions at all is to begin with the idea that we're talking about different ways of paying attention and that there are a finite and articulable number of ways of paying attention. So we can establish these both observationally and logically. Yeah, he comes around sometimes. Both that. Well, the problem with Big Five, of course, is it's just a metaphor. It's also implicitly normative <coughs> and <coughs> completely arbitrary. So it's like IQ in the sense that it's meaningful if you compare <coughs> me 
it's meaningful if you're comparing different IQ scores against each other in the sense that once you correlate things to the test external to people, then you can say these correlations apply to these two people accordingly in comparison. You could use the equivalent with big five, I suppose. But um, again, you're simply making normative rather than actually descriptive observations about reality. And that's an inappropriate thing to do in that context because it should be descriptive, not normative. Um, what I'm saying is descriptively what people do is they prefer kinds of evidence, for example. Some people prefer big five. Well, it's more empirical, quote unquote. But the problem with the big five is that it doesn't link to anything meaningful. In other words, it's absolutely relative, uh, not relatively absolute. Cognitive functions is a system that's based on inverted <coughs> thinking. So it's relatively absolute. It's a lot stronger intellectual. <coughs> the thing is, there's been this horrible misunderstanding because one form of weak intellectualism is to lack empirics. There's been a mistaken belief that the strongest form of intellectualism is that which includes most empirics. When actually, the strong, by far the strongest form of intellectualism is not the empirics sort of intellectualism, but the rationalism, TI kind of intellectualism. Because that's where you actually do the meaningful work on the map, which is what intellectualism is. So, <coughs> nobody disputes that people don't possess somewhere in their body an attribute called conscientiousness. <coughs> and yet, Big Five is predicated on the figurative metaphor that it is. In contrast, nobody disputes that humans do execute processes through time. That's not a metaphor. That's an accurate description of people. Huge difference, right? One thing is attempting to be accurate, cognitive functions. One thing doesn't give a fuck. Big five. Would you like me to get some coffee for you? Um, no thanks. I'm fine with this Coke. Oh, I didn't even see. I forgot about the Coke. <laughs> right. It is important to remember the bar sort of alludes to here. It, as the bar alludes to here, um, personality is defined as those aspects of the self that do not change across time. So one's um, attentional configurations don't change across time, although one's expression or relationship with those various attentional processes may evolve somewhat over time. One of the biggest mistakes that Jordan Peterson would refuse to think about my system. It is not in Jordan Peterson's interest to afford it the legitimate intellectual attention it deserves. So he wouldn't. I mean, first of all, he'd get his ass kicked in any meaningful conversation with me. So he would avoid those conversations at any, at any cost. I mean, anybody who's listening to what I'm saying right now will agree, and, and listening and understanding what I'm saying right now, will agree that Jordan Peterson would get his ass absolutely thrashed by me in any meaningful conversation about psychology. He would stand no chance. Yeah, Joseph William, you're right. And one of the biggest mistakes that, um, Humanity in general is made that only linguistics is really made note of, and only even then to a limited extent, is that while we speak and think and talk in terms of subjects and objects, we exist in a three-plane reality of agents, subjects, and objects. In other words, it is possible to observe, not merely to act or be acted upon. 
I mean, yeah, Jung's psychological types is not a good place to learn about cognitive functions. Talking with fans people is a good place to learn about cognitive functions. I am the world's foremost expert on the subject. You definitely are. I'm possibly the only one who has it completely right, except for those who learned and agree with everything that I'm saying. Yeah, I got 100% on everything, Ron Allen, so on. They said I was Superman, Super A plus man. I mean, I don't remember claiming that the body is a solid thing. However, it is true that the body is a distinct object in space. Sorry, but that is true. A body is a distinct object in space, as opposed to, say, water or air, which is not a distinct object in space. Being smart means being able to make distinctions, not pretending they don't exist. Bigfoot right. basically called me a hippie. What? I tell you, uh, Adderall put me in a pissy mood. That happens. It's not like I'm in a bad mood exactly. Like, uh, like I'm not sad or anything. Yeah, but it, it but gets. I'm, I'm like snappish. Like, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It put me. No offense here. No offense if he happens to be here. But you could say it put me in a leaf trimmer mood. True. Leaf trimmer this always is, seems to be in this mood. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I used Meow. to be. I used to, when I would take Adderall, I used to be very much like that. Some tractable. Thanks. You're welcome. Are you a dish? A cap to give Rachel blowjobs. She just, oh, 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 oh. So meaty. Yeah, just like chats do. <laughs> <coughs> um, so anyway, I guess I... I'm 100% neuroticism. <laughs> wow. Doesn't mean you're dead. Good question. Right. Like, it kind of, like, makes you feel like you are, though. Like, when you get the results, it's like, oh, if you're low on neuroticism, that means that you are carefree in life. If you're high on neuroticism, you probably have problems doing certain things in the okay. day to day. But see, I'm back in. Did a video on Myers Briggs, quote unquote, and thinks personality, quote unquote, is not a consistent phenomenon. Well, people are not 100% predictable. We're talking about an open system. Open systems can react to actions upon the system in ways that are surprising and unpredictable because they themselves have agency, right? <clears throat> so to say that it's not a personality is not a consistent phenomenon is to say that ducks aren't birds because they swim, right? Uh, okay, ducks are birds that swim, though. Personality is a, a, a describable uh, object of analysis, even though it involves processes across time. <laughs> not all objects of analysis... Not all objects of analyses have to um, exist in a singular moment in time as a simple status, a binary status. Certainly processes can be objects of analysis too, for fuck's sake. You know? FFS. You hear what I'm saying? To Sam Backin? Backin? Whatever his name is? FFS. You know what, the bar, honestly, it is really like that. Um, oh my god, I'm such a Gemini hat like slash astrology. But like I'd be lying if I'd say I don't take some pride in it. Like today we were at um Starbucks and they had a painting of the map of the world on the back of their building and it said the Tropic of Capricorn. And then you don't see the word Capricorn too often. So I took a picture of it and I put it on my Instagram. But, like, it is. And, like, and, and look, so the other thing is, my point here is not to shit on astrology. 
is to say that that astrology and tarot and stuff like that they have their place in the world. Yeah, and it's different. It is important to draw distinctions between what kinds of things things are, mm-hmm. right? So th- here's the reality. If I say, OMG, I'm such an ENTP, that's a very meaningful statement compared to, OMG, I'm such a Taurus or whatever. First of all, when I say, OMG, I'm such an ENTP, you could add on to that statement if you wanted to, and you're 99% probably not. And if you think you are, I can... I can um, demonstrate in very short order that you are nowhere close to an extroverted intuition, Dom, you know, for example. Uh, I can establish that ENTP means the capacity to do certain things and a weakness in certain areas because Mm -hmm. life's about trade-offs. One cannot um, (coughs) cash in a potentiality without sacrificing countless others in life. That's just the nature of time and agency. See, like, I don't even think the bi- Big Five shows what's good for self-improvement because it, like, doesn't give advice. It just says, like, I was really pissed off at the, um, what did I get really low on? Oh, uh, the C part. Can... Uh, conscientiousness. Conscientiousness. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Um, I did really low. I got really low on conscientiousness, and it would basically say like you have like problems living life. It's like see, thanks. The, here's the thing: the I bar. Know that. The bar. Look. See, my view is astrology is useless. Then you don't know. You don't understand what the word useless means or useful means. The nice thing about TE and FI, utility based things and uh, personal preference-based things, is that they are arbitrary. Whether or not it's useful depends on the individual who's attempting to use it and whether or not they find it useful. Whether or not it's logically defensible is a separate question and a much more meaningful question to ask. And the answer is, is astrology logically defensible? Well, no, not in the way the cognitive functions are. Yeah. Cognitive functions are logically defensible. Right. This is a binary distinction. There's no sliding scale here. It's not a matter of more or less useful, right? It's a matter of logically defensible or not, right? Right. And utility is a separate matter. Argumentational defensibility is a separate matter from utility, and it's a separate matter from overall correctness too, right? But it's what we ought to use in this context. Now, Big Five is not argumentationally, uh, does not survive argumentational scrutiny, so we should abandon it, discard it as worthless crap. And that's that's reality, okay? That's in other words. If you want to do intellectualism on the mapping level correctly, you think like I do. Now, I'm not saying this is the correct way to think for everything. If you watch me losing shit all the time, left and right, knocking shit over, uh, trying five different ways to do a simple task before I accomplish it, you say, this guy's a complete idiot, right? Because that's the nature of cognitive functions. There's always a trade-off. In order to be this good at what I'm this good at, I have to be very, very bad at something else. That's the beautiful thing about reality is that we have a finite amount of time and a finite amount of attention. And spending it in one way means not spending it in another if the two are mutually exclusive. It's true. So I think what I've done here is explain exactly why. Oh, I that's why why are you talking about other systems being wrong? What I'm telling you is how to think correctly. Why are you focused on something else that's not what I'm saying being wrong? Of course, if it's disagreeing with me, it's wrong. It's funny. I used to, I thought that socionics, uh, I'm not trying to change the subject. I'm just saying that um, when I first read socionics, I thought it was overly rigid as well. Um, What it does is it fails to start in the right spot. It fails to consider the right kinds of considerations for what it's trying to do. It fails to ask the question, what am I and what am I trying to do? Oh, sorry, the bar. I'm in a super fighting mood right now. I took an Adderall this evening and it just put me into. Well, we also, like this morning, because like we went to Delilah. (laughs) Question mark. But Eric, by defining yourself as ENTP would mean you are not part of something bigger. 
I'm not part of something bigger. I'm an ENTP. Okay, I'm not every type magically. Yeah. I'm not developing special skills. No. I'm not someday going to be an INFP too. I'm a fucking ENTP. That's it. Yeah. I don't get to also be an INFJ or an INTJ or whatever else. I am properly put into a box. Same here. ESFP super ego. What the fuck does that mean? I'm in a fighty mood. There's nothing even remotely ESFP about anything I've said this entire evening. It, it, everything I've spoken, every word I've spoken yeah, is as far from ESFP as could possibly be. With the one possible exception being that if they disagree with me, they're wrong. Obviously, if they disagree with me and they're right, they just need to display that, reveal that to me, and I will adopt their position on that matter instead of my own current wrong one, which is why it's most likely the case that if they disagree with me, they're wrong. But the point is, in no sane universe does any person who knows anything at all about typology think that my behavior tonight is consistent with that of an ESFP in any way, shape, or form. He is straight up in ETI. Mm -hmm. No, you were right on Alan Swan. His TI really. Yeah, it's ridiculous. 32. Yeah, th oh, this kind of nonsense. Crazy. Yeah, that kind of nonsense is annoying, isn't it, Oliver Langham? I get I get that you're joking here, but the point is. <laughs> Um, you get people who are TE users and, um, and not, we have, have no NI, NI, like ESTJ, like someone like CS Joseph. And, um, what happens? They think that the important thing to do is to develop all your different cognitive function skills. And they convince a bunch of idiotic ESFPs to, yeah. to listen to them. And it's it's a fucking travesty, is what it is. You know? Yeah. I don't know about Dear Kristen. I don't want to. I've watch never this shit. seen Dear Kristen either. Oh, well, I only took one. Maybe that's why I'm so fighty. I guess. I no, know. but you had Delilah's twenty this morning. Oh yeah, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I don't count. know how long they last. <laughs> that was an XR, too. Okay, good point, Rachel. <laughs> Which type is the most analytical among the viewers? Probably INFJ. Because, yeah, you know, I would say, if nothing else, Rachel is is all about making sure she's being treated fairly. LOL. <laughs> I you took the words right out of my mouth. It's true. I care most about that. I mean, and here's the thing about rage, raging or whatever. First of all, when I'm being fighty, I'm not raging. That in no way does that qualify as rage. Uh, I, I I'm not trying to scare people no. or intimidate them. I'm yes. just being stern and authoritative in my tone. Um, demonstrative TE. That's actually, but um, no. I mean, I, I. The truth is, the bar I test very low on neurotic. Yeah, he's really not. I'm not neurotic. You won't find me. I'm more neurotic. But you're you're a lot more neurotic, although you reveal it very a lot little. More. You're a lot more, but you reveal very little of it. Oh, okay. yeah. Listen, Rachel, just because I can see that you're a lot more neurotic doesn't mean that you display as more neurotic in general. I don't mean to be. Yeah, I wouldn't even call it neurotic. I would just call it, uh, you're still, you're still finding, you're still learning to take, uh, a, a safe, yeah. healthy, loving environment for granted. Yes, you're right, because I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always like, I was always an INFJ, but like, um, I like didn't have any support system, you know, for a while. So it's like, how do you develop as a person? Um, 
Yeah, I don't have anxiety, nervousness, low self esteem. I'm not irritable in general. Um, but no, you're you know, not. like like anybody, I'm subject to being a little bit more fighty, a little less uh, in the mood for putting up with crap. I can and to a fighting. certain extent, that can be appropriate too. Like, you know, I I come in here tonight a little bit angry because I've encountered a um. Well, the bar. I don't remember asking for you to pathologize me. I, um, I'm so surprised. Your, your, the, your irrelevant uh, analysis of me seems more like an attack than any kind of legitimate kind of argumentation, discussion, ideation, yeah. thing of interest at all. It just seems like you want to reduce me to some sort of pathologized state. Uh, I get a I'm not neurotic. I get a little nervous. I okay. do get irritated by bullshit like this. Sometimes I'm more cool about it and sometimes I'm less cool about it. But um, don't mistake uh, my legitimate um, boundaries for neuroticism. I mean, you're pulling bullshit. I honestly... There's the bar. I mean, aren't you just like displaying your tri-type? I didn't accuse you of being neurotic or volatile or withdrawing, did I? I accused you of attacking me with your pathologizations, right? So you're not listening and not responding on point, are you? What does that make you? A, rhymes with rad person, but it's the opposite of rad. You need to respond on point or else you're just wasting time by either, either you're too dumb to participate or you're trolling. Those are the only two options. Or you can respond on point. I never said you were. You said I was. You're not responding on point. That's strike two. Good point, Diamond. No stars in typology. Except for me and Rachel. We're the stars of typology. Oh, I guess that'd be Frank Chance. God damn it. So close. Wait, wait. I mean, Carl Jung. But he's terrible at typology. A good point, Eric. Obviously, I need to pull a bowl. Me too. Astrology is hot right now. Astrology is hot as a oh, swimsuit sure. issue of Sports Illustrated magazine. Mm. I was saying, <clears throat> Oliver Linehan, how uh, I noticed, I told host Eric that I noticed Frank James's um like more recent videos is so is very te heavy and i'm like wondering how he's doing because how, like wondering how he's doing it basically and how he's doing because um that's like really not um an infj like style like the way that he used to do it in his room with like the chair and like the candles in the background, that's so INFJ. Like, it, um, I'm sure. Can you imagine this, Rachel? For, I'm sorry to interrupt you here for a second, but can you imagine this? Um, being so dumb that you think that it's silly to care about words at all. As we crazy my fuck. No, because it really. Like, words you know, imagine really getting matter. mad. Imagine getting mad at comments. Imagine being so dumb that words don't impact you at all. That in fact you never get mad at anything anybody says because you're just that detached from words. That is one dumb my faca right there. Mm. Now, did that make me mad? Well, it, it it I objected to it enough that I thought I need to make clear how. This is a good example of that a learning moment, a teachable, teachable moment. This is what stupid looks like. 
Imagine getting mad at comments. Imagine getting mad at something that wasn't words. Oh, Boba Fett, we already have done the human design chart. Yeah, human, well, human design is, a, is like astrology stuff or whatever. Yeah. It's fun. You know, it's Eric is a really rare type in um, human design, I remember. I'm a... Uh, I'm a combo type. I forget what, what combo, but yeah. Eric is an Eric. Eric is a rare type in uh, human design. Yeah, well, yeah. He. I, I get a little bit annoyed because um, sometimes people come in and they put a turd in front of me and they say, this is a perspective. And I go, no, you can sh and I shove the turd back in their mouth, you know. Like, you're too dumb to participate, sorry. And that, that is a good enough reason for me to ban you. If you're simply too dumb to participate, goodbye. Boba Fett, like, um, a lot of things um, that are metaphysical uh, show Eric in a very good light. Um, so he's rare in a lot of ways. It's cool, not only MBTI, but like in other measures as well. Yeah, you got lucky on all those uh, things like numerology, numerology and astrology. astrology. Uh, yeah. I don't know about if you say if you get lucky in tarot because it's an ongoing like check the tarot period. Mm, yeah, but you have a natural affinity for it. Like you picked it up really, really quickly. Like most people are afraid. Um, I still ask you all the time, like young card is. You have to remind yeah. me what it looks like. Yeah. You know, so it's like I think it's. Uh, I've sort of I picked up you know some of them. I I I I still have trouble remembering all the different you know what's the four of cups versus the six of cups versus the six of swords or you know, it's like it's hard to keep all those separate. But and the thing is, the different decks have different pictures. If I can see the original deck picture, the OG. Those those. White, white, whatever his name was. What's it called? Like Rider Weight. Rider Weight. Rider Weight deck picture. Then I'll know what it is. We what type of get... Obama, according to my system? I mean, I haven't typed Obama, but I am. I would claim he's an ENTP based on the information I have. Yeah, I would claim that too. I've never had a typing session with him. So, according to my system, quote unquote, it's not possible really for me to type him because I need to actually test him directly. Be able to have a conversation with him and be able mm -hmm. to follow up. So let's say I hear him say mia in a given interview. I might interpret it as mia, but I need to know if it's mia. I need to ask follow up questions. So that's one thing you're going to look at for a system that is correct. They're going to tell you the limits of what it can do under what circumstances it can do it. And it's going to be able to, so the thing is, when I'm talking about cognitive functions, what I'm saying is this, um, we will get certain things that correlate very highly. Uh, we're going to get a sliver of people who do really well on any TI questions. That group of people you can call NTPs. It's a very small percentage of the population. So whether or not uh, Obama is an ENTP would, would require me to ask him those extroverted intuition skills tests and deliver those introverted thinking mm -hmm. skills tests and also to ideally observe for a while because it's not the case that the skill is the same thing as the function. The attentional manner comes along with certain value priorities as well. So being a TI DOM, for example, means consistent map consistency is your number one priority uh, as a value, as an absolute framing value. If map consistency is not at all a relevant consideration in a given circumstance, you're going to avoid that circumstance. Now, these things are all just sort of definitionally, observationally, obviously the case, right? If, in fact, you're somebody... If, in fact, we can make a meaningful distinction between caring a lot about the map 
and caring a lot about the territory, and we certainly we can, if we can say that uh, we can define the distinction in terms of the simulatable sense in, ter- in that the map one is turn-based, the <coughs> territory <coughs> one is real-time, the map-based one is communicative, the physical one or real-time one is uh, experiential, and um, these are all meaningful distinctions to make. We need to point out as well. Okay, well, remember the bar. We're not talking about different interpretations of things. But there's a correct way to talk about it, and there are ways that are not correct. So it is not correct to say that functions are conscious values more so. It is correct for you to say, I see them that way, but the only correct response for me to make in this instance is you see them wrong then. They are processes and ontologically defining things, right? Depends on where they are in your stack. So I have SI fourth in my stack. It defines me ontologically in certain ways, very clearly independently, in other ways, very loosely. Because why? Because it's an intentional manner that includes keeping track of ideas, which I display all the time, keeping track of lots of ideas that I come across and collecting them. Um, it it also displays, however, as, um, you know, keeping a neat area, uh, your own little personal space and in your body, sleeping enough, eating enough, whatever. I'm not so good at that. It also displays as a example based rather than a a universal based means of knowing, which means practically the following. Instead of thinking, I wonder if INFJs do meow, I note Rachel just did meow. What is that revelatory of in terms of INFJs? And I check it out with the with the system that I currently have in place to see if there's inconsistencies with it. I make a determination as to whether by that metric, no, by that metric, whether or not she would be uh, behaving independently like of type or consistently with type. I think about the mechanisms behind it and try to explain it thusly, right? If if and only if everything checks out according to all these metrics then I might come forward and present it as a theory about INFJs. It nevertheless will have originated from my experience of something Rachel did and extrapolating out from that. That's another way that SI expresses. So if you want to understand it in in a full sense, you're going to understand, you have to understand the human being as comprising three sorts of self, agent, object, subject. So there's a lot to understand. When you come in and start telling me what you think, you 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 should quickly realize if you're not suffering from too much dunning Kruger, oh shit, I should be asking Eric what I should think. Because he clearly understands this way better than anybody else. That's my message tonight. It's my fighty message. If you think I'm wrong, if you think cognitive functions are bullshit, first of all, if you think cognitive functions are bullshit and you haven't, and you're not familiar enough with my explanations of things, then you're, that's fine. You're correct. Until you come across my explanation, in which case you change your position on it. Um, if you have come across my position on it, you still think it's incorrect, and you were arguing with me about it, you should stop making statements and start asking questions and learning things. That's, that's obvious to anybody paying any attention. Well, regardless, I'm telling you what I'm telling you. So I don't know what you are. Have I ever typed you or I just guess from the chat? Me guessing from the chat is not telling you you're whatever. It's okay? really difficult. I've said it a million times. I cannot yeah. type people from the chat. Um, Eric thought that I was in either ISFP or ISFJ. Um, through the chat because I talk so little, you know? So it's like, and I'm so not either of those types. And then I typed her live. I thought she was an extrovert. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, 
you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes an hour is not really enough to get it down. I did say it was a little bit unsure at the end. What is map consistency? So map consistency is things like, uh, well, um, this, uh, where is it? Looking for a specific comment. Um, how do you improve the super ego block and the id block? I'm still confused about that. Okay, so that is something that does not care ultimately about map consistency with map rules, okay? It cares about map consistency with territory, but it never questions really whether it's using the right map. So it's the wrong map to say, well, put it this way. To ask uh, the question that I just read, which is, Or was it? Which is like, how do you improve your ego block functions or something? Well, the answer to that is Uh, I can't find the thing anymore. Uh, why do people place their ego in TI? A lot of people think this is a mystical thing. I understand it with N I N E, even F E to some extent, but TI is the easiest to understand the map functions, right? Um, oh, how do people improve your? How do you improve the super ego block and the id block? I'm so confused about that. So it's it's a weird question, right? The answer is, of course, you don't improve things like it. Um, it's like uh, I mean, it, on on a simple on a, on a reductively simple level, the the answer is you're asking how do I make both ends of the teeter totter go up, and you don't. That's a teeter totter, okay. It's impossible to make both ends of it go up without breaking it. So map consistency then occurs on a couple of different levels. Checking the map to make sure it's the right map for the kind of territory. In other words, checking the map against the map rules is meta analysis. And that's what I did right there with that question. As I said, the reason this question is bad is it's a category error. You can't, you can't, accomplish getting both ends of the teeter-totter up without breaking the teeter-totter. So um, that's map consistency with map rules. The question itself suggests uh, they want a map consistency with their map so that they can make territory moves, right? In other words, they're assuming this is the kind of map you use to do things off of, right? Like Normally, if I'm driving to Phoenix, I'm using a map. I'm looking at it in the car, old-fashioned map that's on paper. Um, then I am going to uh, use it to get somewhere. So that's the idea of basically not questioning the frame of reference at all. Well, here's a map. What's, what do we use maps for? We use them to get someplace. What do we? So we got hotkeys for. How do you improve this block and that block? You don't improve it. It's not that kind of map. Okay. It's not a map that tells you where to, how to get someplace, really. It's like a map of the human body, like an anatomically correct uh, model of the human body. Um, it's, it's not there so that you can know how to make your capillaries more like, like veins and eventually 
help them grow into arteries. It's not a good idea to have your capillaries be arteries. Okay, that's not that's not preferable. It's not a good idea to have your underutilized functions more utilized because the reason they're underutilized is that's the low end of the teeter totter. You can't you can't improve that quote unquote without spending more time doing it. And you spend more time doing it, you do less time doing this. And you're saying, how can I be not myself anymore? Mm -hmm. I lived that way for a while. I know it's true. One of my favorite true. fictional characters. Ooh. Right now, I have to say it's the spider from So I'm a Spider, So What? That's the first thing that comes to mind. Oh. Either that or Rimuru the Slime. But, um, like, all time... Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm quite fond of uh, the guy with the mustache in um, that Marvel one where Star Lord. What's what's that? Oh yeah. Um, what's that movie? Chris Pratt. Yeah, but what's that movie franchise called? Star Lord. It's. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I'm quite fond of the main character guy with the mustache in there. He seems he's a very likable fellow, mm -hmm. uh, despite his bluster. Yeah, he seems like That's a likable great. ESTP kind of yes, guy. Yeah, they call him an ENTP. They call him an ENTP. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. I think he's ESTP. ESTP. I find him likable. Right? He is ESTP. He's totally ESTP. Star Lord. Yeah. Okay, so I find my um, favorite character. One of my favorite characters, um, and this is going to surprise probably my family, who is all screaming. They would be all screaming Ariel um, from The Little Mermaid. But really, like, as I've gotten older, I've, well, I've always had a thing. I, I dressed up as, like, Alice in Wonderland, like, three times in my life. I love Alice in Wonderland. Alice. I love her. She has a little cat. And she dreams away, and she realizes that reality is a good thing too. Um, characters I also like to include uh, the character from today's movie. I like Bob Odenkirk's character. Me too. He was quite likable. Okay, I like his character in Better Call Saul too. Like, I think he's really good. Like, he's an impressive. I mean, I was impressed today. I wouldn't have thought of him as that kind of character at all, and he pulls it off. Yeah. <laughs> so he was another character I liked a lot. Oh, Rick Sanchez. I, I said I would definitely say Rick, Rick Sanchez. I know people hate him. People think he's, like, a piece of shit. And I think at this point in the season, like where we are, he knows he's a piece of shit. So it's like, okay, you know, I don't know. I just like. I like the, I like the pig and babe, pig in the city. Aww. That's a character that comes to mind as being likable. Oh, you're a pig in astrology. So the bar, the bar asks, so you like likable characters, basically. What about. Relatable characters. Ooh, relatable characters are. I mean. Yeah, I saw that Morage. It's gonna be on Adult Swim, which is exciting, but like I don't know how to see it. I I know HBO Max will have it. But <laughs> you probably. Just gotta wait for Adult Swim. To watch okay. Adult Swim. It's um, in June. Relatable characters. Well, I can think of relatable character moments. Uh, okay, well, here's a relatable character to me, Jack Skellington. Yeah, oh, and then Sally would be a relatable one for me. Thank you for reminding me of that movie. I think Jack Skellington, uh, I can relate to that. I have mm -hmm. relatable moments as well. Like, I relate, I remember relating a lot to this thing in Amadeus when I saw it even as a kid, where it's a scene where Soliari comes in and he's, you know, or the, the prince or the king or whatever comes in and he's, Soliari's written him a march and he plays the march for the king or as the king played the march in for himself, so to speak. And uh, 
then Amadeus comes into the sounds of the king playing this song that Soliari has written. And and Amadeus goes, Oh, that's kind of nice. I like that. That's that's cool. Hey, you know what? It'd be kind of better if you did it like this, though. And he makes it like a million times better. <laughs> the thing is, it's not like I really had experiences like that exactly, but even as a kid, I related to this irritating phenomenon of people not wanting my ideas. Mm -hmm. Finding them either threatening or disruptive of what they had planned or it didn't matter that it was better or worse or whatever, you know, it's just people not wanting my ideas. Yeah, God bless ENTP ideas. Thank you. Elisa Alma. <laughs> it's true. Um, Sally is one for me. Um, even just like her lifestyle, the way that it happens, kind of eerily comparative to mine. Um, but like, no joke. Um, that's it. Uh, they're getting work done, Noah McFarland. They're getting work done, okay? Now, here's the thing. You got to let a series get a little bit of work done. So, I want to talk about four episodes ago of Reincarnated as a Slime. Four episodes reincarnated. Four episodes ago, Reincarnated as a Slime. You would say, this is a little slow. Three episodes. This is a little slow, you might say. But I didn't even complain about it because I knew they were doing necessary work. That was going to pay off. And the last two episodes have paid off in dramatic fashion. Let me tell you, Rimuru, close your ears. You don't want a Rimuru spoiler. Close them right now. They're closed. Okay, good. Rimuru successfully harvested 10,000 plus human souls to summon a very mighty demon and resurrected the town folk. And, uh, and then additionally, um, in this most recent episode, uh, you know, sort of came to terms with his new powers a little bit, and uh, and made a, made a contract with the demon that he summoned, uh, who is super powerful. Demon. So all in just two episodes, just like bam, 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 so much action. But they have to make the action count for anything to make me feel it. They got to set it up with some story, you know. What are my favorite films? Um, my old answers, which is to say, answers that I had on my blogger profile for a long time because it asked that question mm -hmm. were Nightmare Before Christmas and Princess Bride. Those are two really good movies. But favorite films, to answer that question now is so much more difficult because I've seen so many goddamn movies now. Um... But that could those can still be they're still they're, they're classics for me. They're SI favorites, I guess you'd say. Um, but that, that doesn't mean I think they're the two best movies I've seen. Uh although Nightmare Before Christmas, I think I think Nightmare Before, Before Christmas is a classic. It, it, I can't think of any other movie that does so much with the soundtrack. Right? So successfully. So successfully. So sets the tone of the film. The town? I've never heard of that. It's with Ben Affleck and his brother, I believe. It's a, it's a, it's about Boston. You like movies where you can learn something from and you incorporate it into your life. If I were like that, I'd only watch movies about plumbing. I could really use some plumbing skills. Yeah, I could too, actually. Oh, yeah. my gosh. There's absolutely nothing from the movie we watched today, fortunately, that I can incorporate into my life. No. But I am super glad that Bob Odenkirk chose to address his problems with the way of the fist. Me too. It's not my way, but it's a way I enjoy watching it on the large screen. It was uh, very entertaining. <laughs> I mean, the abstract idea behind that movie is if somebody does you bad... Beat the living shit out of them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's a very good message, really, but it makes for a fun movie. 
once you set up the bad guy is thoroughly unredeemably evil, yeah, then it becomes enjoyable to watch to watch the good guy the, who's giving them plenty of chances and everything beat the shit out of them. Yeah, because I was like, basically <laughs> how it starts off is like he just lives his day in and out the same, but you, you I don't. It, it's it's impossible to spoil. Stuff, it, it, where spoil is the spoiler? It. This is the movie. It's the whole movie. He has a normal life. Somebody fucks with him. He then, goes. Then he really, goes. John Wick. Yeah, and, he goes John Wick. We realize that his dad it. was in the FBI. He was in some sort of. He was in the war. Some some war. He was like a CIA guy. Yeah, basically, they like allude to it. Yeah, but uh, the point is, none of those things are really particularly relevant to the storyline. It's just the storyline is badass action. He he. There's a little bit of build up where he has increasingly more reasons to get pissed mm -hmm. and start and to get violent, and finally yeah. he goes fuck it and goes out and starts kicking ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the moment like brings itself to him, but he's also redeemable because he tries not to kill them. Yes. In fact, when he one person he smashes their esophagus and he, they're choking, he makes a hole in their throat so he can breathe. Mm -hmm. That makes him a good guy, you see. Well, like for pure humor, one of my favorites uh, to go to is um, Anchorman. I love Anchorman. Anchorman is good. Uh, comedy movies, best comedy movies. Uh, That's a hard one. I, I grew up loving Airplane. That camp one. Really? Oh my God! What had American Summer? I love Why that movie American too. American Summer made me laugh a lot. That's a good. That's a good funny one. That really made me laugh. Yeah, that yeah. one. I liked watching that with you. Um. <laughs> really? Morage? Nobody is written by the guy who wrote Tomic. Oh really? Wow. That Shocking. makes sense. Well, you know, there's the. Uh, the writing's fine as far as the dialogue goes. It, 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 the yeah. dialogue is, is mostly natural seeming, believable dialogue. Mm -hmm. The buildup of the villain is fine, but there's just these sort of tacked on bits of nonsense that really kind of aren't necessary. You could cut out one of the characters entirely. Yeah. What type is John Wick in my system? He's a character in a movie. He doesn't have a type. Again, what I said before, it's a category error to ask that kind of question. The bottom line is a person can be offered a type when you ask them questions and, they, and you can check their thing. If I see scenes from John Wick, I might say to you, he seems like an ISTP. Sure, he seems like an ISTP. But that, in my system, quote unquote, when you add that to it, you're saying that, first of all, he's he could be typed something else in some other system and that would be equally correct because the system's are interchangeable, that the maps are interchangeable because they're both maps of the same thing. Except one of them is just scribbles on a paper by a child, and one of them is an actual detailed map with actual top log, topographical information and actual, you know, satellite reference points and stuff like that. So it's ridiculous. Um, the bar says, didn't you say Starler was ESTP though? Who? Star Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy. He might be, but I think he's probably ESTP because of his weird emotional relationship. Yeah, I do his too. Weirdly non-emotional relationship with that uh, purplish girl. Yeah, the or green, green girl. Mm -hmm, green, yeah. green girl. I think the green girl is an ISTP. Um, so I think I think he's an ESTP. I may have said previously ESFP. Regardless, I don't dislike characters who are ESFPs often. Naruto's an ESFP. I like him. Mm -hmm. Asta from Black Clover's an ESFP. I like him. Um, it's just that the world, the world I inhabit, namely this world here, is not a world in which ESFPs can do anything but bother people or spread misinformation. They're just not fit. It's like asking a fish to fly. Um, in the same sense that I am not fit to go out and be a... Uh, Listen, baby, labels are just going to hold us down and slow us back, and nobody owns anybody, okay? Oh, we can only just live for right now. I'm, so I'm not equipped to be that guy. Oh, if if society demanded that I go out and slay the puss and, and use all those kind of talks and, and go and just do that, I'm just not equipped to succeed at that. The problem is, here on the Internet, we're, what world are we in? We're in my world, not theirs. 
And in my world, they are as shitty at existing as I am in their world. So, in other words, if I was supposed to be wingman on this, let's go, oh, hey, these girls have coke, let's go to there. And I'd be like, I, this make me uncomfortable. This girl's really skanky. And they're just like, no, bro, come on, let's make a porn or whatever. Ew. You know, it's just, it's, I, that's just, how it goes, though. From, from their perspective, I would just be the wet turd mm-hmm. holding down the evening, right? And from their perspective, and all the other people who are participating in this debauchery, they'd be right. Oh my God. I don't belong there. You do I. That stuff used to scare me. It still does. Like, it intimidates me. Yeah, it scares me too when you talk about it. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway. <laughs> what is the point about what the bar said about Star Lord? Because, like, he wanted you to... Right, but that's because I didn't say in my system. That was a part I was objecting to the bar, was the in my system part. When you ask the question, in your system, what type is man? That's the problem I was having. Not the what type is a character, but the in your system part. I mean, I did say, first of all, of course, character is a character. You can't write man. I would have no problem typing them. But if you're asking me in my system, well, then I have to say, well, technically you can't type characters. Yeah, it's really difficult to type characters. It, you you can do it just fine. It, but I'm just saying, if you're if you're asking me as a professional typologist, what's my position on on the type of this character according to my system? Well, according to my system, I have to interview somebody, ask them questions. Follow up on what they say, blah, 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 to type them. That doesn't mean I won't type people. I won't type characters. I do it all the time. But what I'm saying is I don't ever say, well, in my system, there are meh. Because the in my system part is a problem on multiple grounds. It's not my system. It's the correct interpretation of cognitive functions. Jung came up with cognitive functions, not me, right? It's not my system. I took lots of things from various places or whatever, I, who knows where it came? It doesn't matter. The point is that it's the correct interpretation of personality as understood through attentional manners, the most correct one we have now. You know what is so interesting? The bar he, the bar says, yeah, well, characters are fake. Obviously, they are not going to have a set type. Well, I found out that um, Sex in the City, the main character, was actually based off of someone who like really lives in New York and really lived like that. And, like, as soon as I found that out, I was, like, so turned off by the character. I was, like, willing to, like, for some reason, I don't know why, but I guess because it's, like, in my fantasy world, like, I was able to, like, like, forgive the character for its mistakes because I'm, like, I was just, like, written that way. But, like, to know that, like, someone, like, really, like, lived that way... Uh, it was hard for me to get behind. I don't know. It, it ruined it. Like it did. It. But um, yeah. Characters on TV shows are really hard to um type because they're usually done by, you know, they're written by other people. Sure, Fox. We're not Discord though. I'll put the link here. We'll talk right now. Yeah, not Discord. Discord is the devil. Or as they say in Spain. Discord took away some of my girlfriends from coming back here. We haven't seen Zandy in a long time. Yeah. Here's a link. Do you really want to think? Yeah. You can push a little link right there. Man, Manuka, Sam Pagni. Um, this is a question. Pag, I um, I used to study astrology, and I still do, actually. Um, Astro Seek, um, Astro Dash Seek, is uh, dot com is really good website with a lot of tools 
Um, the difference is that I realize that, like, it's not like ugh, we don't have, like, free will. And a lot of, like, I don't know. I, if I could if I could write the book on astrology, I would do it differently. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on, my man? How are you doing? Doing good. Thanks for joining I, us this evening. I like your I like your videos that you've been posting out. Thanks. I like the aggressive nature that you have when uh, giving your opinions with typing. Yeah, well, that's because <laughs> they're not my opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to. I have a question for you. Uh -huh. um, so when you want to type people. Would do you want to in turn kind of help people find out their type, or is it kind of you in turn trying to see if you kind of try not trying to prove, but you kind of trying to like keep bettering your way of like figuring this stuff out so you can like learn it for yourself and like type better and be more precise? You know what I mean? Because does that make any sense? That might not be I mean, I've, I've touched hundreds of people, and um, it is the case that the more people I type, the better I get at interpreting certain things because I have a larger pool of comparatives to compare against. But um, my goal is to accurately type somebody. What does that mean? It means if, for example, a person has extroverted intuition as a dominant function, I want to be able to identify what that looks like clearly enough that I can tell you definitively whether you do or do not have it as a dominant function. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I believe I have TI, um, and when I mean I believe I have TI, I believe that I don't have TI polar. Um, and why I uh, believe that is because uh, I could give you, I could try to give you a little, uh, a little example or something. But my roommate, I believe he's an INTJ. I, I don't fucking know. Can I, can I swear on you? Is that okay? Yeah, of course, sure. That's fine. Um, and by so, the way, I, I, I have not typed you as an ESFP. Note that. Okay. I, I just I said you're, you're not. Saying, I all I said in that video, just to be clear, I want to make this abundantly clear. The only thing I've, I've officially said about you. Is that you are not an ENTP or an INTP, okay? Okay. All right. So, so I think one thing that gets me confused is I am definitely very, uh, like, I feel I definitely have, uh, like, SI. The thing is, is, like, it's hard because, obviously, pretty much you're using everything except the polar really is, like, or I, I don't know if you are using the polar function, but it's just very, like, difficult for somebody to even understand that I don't. I'm not, I'm not too educated on all this stuff, so I can't like say something in some way, but all I know is, uh, let's, let me ask this, I guess. So if some, if, uh, if somebody is remembering something that is SI versus SE, how would somebody be remembering that? Um, how would that be displayed within their memory? Would you say? Okay. So we'll do an example of distinguishing between NI and SI right now. Can you replay a word association game, okay? I'm going to give you three words. Excuse me. All right, the first word is fountain. What word do you, what do you associate with the word fountain? Uh, fountain, I would say uh, water fountain or... Uh, first thing that comes to mind. Just first oh, word that comes to mind. The, the, fir the first thing that comes to mind is like... Uh, the say in the middle of an apartment complex of like a big like water fountain or something. Okay. Um, second word is beach. The first word? No. Um, the second word is beach. Uh, sand. Okay. And the third word is tree. Just tree? Uh, uh, and they're not associating at all. Just uh, whatever first, comes to mind. The first thing that came to my mind was bark. Bark. Okay, so now Which those are, hold on, listen, listen, hold on. Those are NI associations in general. The middle one's a little questionable, but 
That's the natural way that anybody does a word association. If you were to ask me, let's play word association. You were to say girl, I'd say boy. You were to say hat, I'd say head, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the NI answer. Now, to demonstrate the difference between NI and SI, I want you to answer the same three words, but this time, do it like this. Fountain. Fountain reminds me of a time when I was meow, 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 and meow, 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 and I saw meow, 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 and I was with meow, 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 and this happened. Okay. Okay. Can you do you want me to do different words? Just no, the same I'm words. Same words. Yes. Okay. So just say it again, fountain. Fountain. So yeah, what do you associate with it now? Uh, as I associate, I could remember me jumping over uh, when I was drunk one night. I could have been my. I was locked out of my apartment complex, and I basically like a friend just dropped me off, and I could remember me, uh, like me, just like kind of. Uh, wanting to like show off in front of my like friend that I could like jump over this really high fence while they were like watching me get in because they just dropped me off and they weren't like going there. Jumped over that fence um and then like as I remember jumping over uh, that okay, fence, that's it, fine. Just, it was really quiet. And it was <laughs> that, that's plenty of SI. So yeah. the thing is that's an SI association, whereas water is an NI association. Okay. Now for beach, what do you what do you come up with for an SI association for beach? Uh I remember when I was I threw uh I threw, uh, I was with my family, it was in San Diego, and I threw sand down, my sister was like squatting down, I threw sand like down her, uh, like pants, I don't know why, like she was like sitting down, and I just like threw it in her pants, and then um, she got like really mad at my parents, got really mad at me, and then like it was, uh, uh, that's all I remember really, just like I really, and I like nothing about it, okay, like, stupid. All right. what about, what about was, tree, what about tree, what do you remember for tree? Um, tree. Uh, one time, I, uh, when I think of tree, I think of this time when me and my friend Ryan, we were playing, this one when I was like way younger, we were playing uh, like football outside or whatever, and then a football got stuck in our neighbor's tree, and like um, the one of the neighbor's dads, like it was like this kid we would play uh, football with Sam, his dad tried to throw a box of nails up in the tree, and I just remember it being like, like literally the worst possible thing you could fucking throw up there, because obviously he threw it up there, and like the box just fell down and all the nails fell out. So I just thought it was like, like the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Okay. Um, now and, I want, can you do, give me three words and I'll do the same thing. Three different words. You make up three words though. And I'll, and I'll do the association. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, soccer ball, uh, world cup. Um, Kit Kat bar. Candy. Xylophone. Vibraphone. <laughs> okay. So that's my NI associations. Um, now for the same the same three words, soccer ball, if I'm going to do an SI association, I'd say I remember working at the World Cup at the Rose Bowl during the end game of Brazil and um versus uh Italy, and that was pretty cool to have been a part of such a known you, event. I worked there. Worked there. I worked at that game. Was that? It was uh, probably 1994, maybe, hmm. uh, or 92. I'm not sure what years the World Cups are on, but uh, it wasn't Brazil versus Germany. It was Brazil versus Italy, and it was at the Rose Bowl, and it was, I think, 94. I'm pretty sure it was Italy. Did Italy won? I think Italy won on penalty shots. I think uh, I was an usher at the game. I remember my town celebrating it pretty heavily. Hmm. Um, and then for the the next one, which was uh, that's cool. What was after soccer yeah, ball? I can't even remember. Kit Kat, Kit Kat. For that one, I would draw an association of the fact that uh, my dad often has a bag of of. Kit Kats in the fridge or in his bowl of candy that he keeps in there, even though he's always on a diet. And, uh, and then for the third one, which was um, xylophone, xylophone, I uh, I don't really have any good SI memories. I guess I would I would relate a conversation I had had previously with somebody who was Sean Ryan Barron, who explained to me what the difference between a xylophone and a vibraphone was. So the recent conversation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, in that instance, my SI, my NI answer is really an SI answer. It's a link between the word xylophone and something that's happened fairly recently. Now, here's the thing. If you just have both of us do those two things, there's no clear distinction between our types. Okay? 
Yeah. At least at first glance, for sure. It, at second glance, you might say, well, Eric, your stories were about watching something. Um, and then your story was about uh, um, knowing something about your dad in the house. And then your third one was about uh, a conversation you had. Whereas this, whereas Fox, is that your name? Yeah, Fox, Fox, yeah, Fox. Whereas Fox, Fox's stories were about him doing things. So you might make that distinction. I wouldn't call that definitive about anything, but it would be a legitimate distinction to make. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they beat Italy on penalties in the final. That's right, Oliver. I actually didn't stay for all the whole thing. I didn't stay for the uh, the um, penalty shots. That's <laughs> because great. I was tired of standing up. It, we weren't allowed to sit down. We were allowed to stay. So after regulation time was over, we were allowed to go home or we could stay. But we uh, they weren't paying us for uh, overtime. Awesome. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't pay us for any extra period of time besides the regulation time. So as a consequence, at the end of regulation, if you wanted to go home, you could go home. If you wanted to stay and watch the game, you had to stand up where you were as an usher and watch the game from your usher spot. This, this time you get to face that way instead of that way. During the working hours, you're supposed to be facing that way. The usher, most of us were watching the game the whole time. <laughs> did it take a long time to leave the stadium? Or did well, that's why I left early. early. That's why I left early. I didn't want to stay for the penalty shots because I was like, you know what? I am never going to get out of the parking lot. Yeah. Yes. I see. I see. Um, um, okay, let's go back to you. you Sorry me. about my World Cup story. Go ahead. Back to you. Is there any way that you could try to help figure out if I uh, have a tendency to lean or a preference to lean towards extroverted intuition uh, or extroverted sensing? Um. Is there any way you could? I mean, okay. I guess what I'd say is, I mean, here, here's some sort of general value questions that uh, might might correlate pretty well. Uh, do you prefer violent cartoons involving swords and dragons, or violent cartoons involving MMA and, and assault rifles? <laughs> uh, violent curtains. What does that mean? Violent, cur violent cartoons. Oh. Violent cartoons involving, involving swords and dragons or violent cartoons involving MMA fighters? Uh, definitely the swords and dragons. Okay. Because I could, uh, I could feel like I could already imagine all uh, everything that would go down with the, uh, um, the second one. The MMA? Yeah. Okay. Um, when you, if you were tasked with writing a song about um about courage and um and dirty pants if i you're saying right right four lines of a song about courage and dirty pants um i shit in my pants in front charlotte sing along do uh i like shit in my pants in the class and i decided to uh, not go to the bathroom and change it because it shows everybody else that I have courage and that I can perfectly uh, deal with all the uh, hate that comes along with it, which then in turn shows, God, this is, this is, this is, this is stupid. I don't know what I'm saying right That's now. That's fine. But, uh, no, no, look, it's fine. It's um, fine. Don't stress yeah, about it at all. Or, okay. Or, let me, let me ask you this. Let's play, uh, um, Two lines, uh, two lines of rhyme. Okay, so I'll say the first one. Um, if you have an ample chunk of resin, then you'll be a smoking all day long. Now you come up with two lines that rhyme with resin and long. So I'll give you the example one. Uh, uh, it, this ain't no crime that I be here confessing. Uh, I love this resin smoking from my bong. 
So that would be the two line completion. I'll give you two lines to start out with and you do the two line completion. Can you do easier words too? Sure. Because uh, I, I don't even, I'll be honest, I don't even know what a resin means. My uneducated ass right here. Oh, uh, it's just, it's just like leftover marijuana goo. Um, oh, I see. Okay, how about this? Uh, when, when, Bra or how about Brazil defeated those old, no, I'm sorry. Brazil, Brazil was beaten by those strong Italians while playing soccer on that summer day. Now you do the second two lines. So the words are Italian. And day, right. Brazil. Um, and then I rode out on my stallion and decided to pay the stallion owner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I can't consider it of you. Um, so what do you do with your hobby time, quote unquote, when you're not doing um, stuff you so consider important? Okay, so uh, my my life is basically uh, waking up, um, chasing the Adderall high so I can get whatever I can get done um, within that time period, usually like two hours. And then once I then like go off that and I'm like coming down off that, I, I'll, I'll go to the gym. Uh, and then once I get back from that, from the gym, I will take like Kratom and then I will then like be able to like focus again on stuff, but only for like a couple hours. Um, and so I'm basically, I'm basically like watching like a ton of psychology YouTube videos. Um, I'm basically like reading, like I was just, I was just reading and stuff. I'll use like audible because I, I found myself like I can never just read something like this. Like my mind drifts too much. I can't read it. So I realized like, hmm, maybe if, uh, maybe if I uh, combine another sense, like hearing or something with it, then I'll be able to focus more. And then, so I tried that with Audible or Strive. All right. Well, let me, let me, let me did, so then I speed it up and then I'm able to get through the book very quick. Um, let, so me, basically, let me respond to that real quick. <laughs> let me respond to that real quickly. <laughs> so, um, people who prefer to process language auditorily instead of by reading it, or just visually and not I'm auditory. auditory Listen, people who enjoy processing words auditorily Ew. or just visually and not auditorily at all mm -hmm. um, tend to be uh, NI. So uh, the thing is, like, for example, Rachel and I watch anime together. I am a much, much, much prefer subtitle anime to dubbed anime because I can read the words and process them so quickly from the written thing. And then I can look at the pictures a little bit, you know, whereas just about anybody else besides NTPs tend to prefer not having to read that much while they're watching things because they don't how auto read so quickly. Yeah, how do they know this? Like, how do they know the people that have, how do they know the people that they were testing were in TVs? Um, what people are you talking know, about? Like, how do, like, how do they know that? How do, how do you know that people that are NI process audio? More? Well, this is, this is, this is extrapolated and based originally on an observation made uh, by how Rachel and I process information differently and how for her, it's a bit more work to read all that uh, text. Now, the thing that's important to remember is this. What we definitely know is that some people much prefer to read a lot of text very quickly like that. They find it a very comfortable way to watch it. And some people do not prefer that. And those are distinct classes of people. Mm -hmm. um, so whether or not you want to call that linking to extroverted intuition, well, that depends, of course, on how rigorous you want to define things. If you want to define things correctly, you're going to understand that extroverted intuition is the generation of communicative ideation, which is to say, 
talking about a bunch of words and processing words very quickly as well. Words are basically a mapping function. Written words are the most mappingest of the functions. Now, interestingly, ENTJs can't seem to process uh, stuff auditorily at all, hardly. They have to pay complete attention to process it. Uh, they're much better processing stuff that's just visual. So NI can go either way. But <coughs> what it typically doesn't do is um, process the written word nearly as quickly as expert intuition does. So even an ENTJ would probably prefer dubbed over subtitled anime because, uh, again, subtitles require you to process a lot of written words very quickly. Mm -hmm. So you, so, um, you and your partner, you've seen the uh, differences within that, with an I and that. So where did this ENTJ come okay. from? If you were originally saying that that was between like what you have observed with you two. So who's the ENTJ then? Okay, the ENTJ, the observation I made about the ENTJ regarding the auditory stuff was actually a woman that I dated, I went on three dates with, mm -hmm. and uh, made some observations. But regardless, the point isn't about the observations, right? The point is that it can be observed, regardless of whether I've made these observations, that some people process the written word a lot more comfortably, and some people process in other ways more comfortably. Right mm -hmm. now, I've pointed out a problem with my claim here, linking it to expert intuition, because I've also said that ENTJs seem to prefer to process the written word over visually over auditorily. However, I've additionally made an unsubstantiated claim that I I believe them to process it much more slowly than I do, and and other NTPs. Now that is unsubstantiated. I have no example of that or proof because I never had a speed reading contest with this woman. But the point isn't isn't whether or not that's the case. I have yeah. lots and lots and lots of experiences showing that there's a few people who are very much like me who can keep up with these kind of conversations and keep up with this kind of uh, very, very language heavy kind of interaction with either media or other people. And there are the rest of the population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I would definitely say that um, audio is just, I can uh, say if I like, I'm very, feeling very hesitant to wash the dishes and there's nothing going on, but then I put some, uh, put some uh, earphones in and then I have no problem, like it's way, I don't have no problem doing it, but it's way easier to do, you know, it's, uh, it makes everything, it makes everything, makes everything easier. When I'm when I have something in my ear. What about going to sleep? What about when you're going to sleep? Do you like to have it something playing in the background, or do you like to uh, have it quiet? I, I used to I used to make my own uh, like affirmations, like you've heard of affirmations and all that stuff. Right. Um, yeah. So I like I kind of thought I guess this is uh, completely out of the point or not a tangent or whatever. So I won't go into that. But uh, um, but. Uh, so going to sleep, no, I use, I'm super sensitive to sound. So if like a roommate, like the last apartment I lived at, I don't know if I'm at but the last apartment I lived at, it was uh, the people above me, they had like kids just moved in and stuff and they were like, it's like so loud and stuff. And it was, it was a disaster. So I had to find a way to do that. So I used to earplugs, but now since, uh, my roommate goes to sleep and stuff, it's, uh, it's really, yeah, I don't know. It's really easy then. Uh, so. I don't need any time. I pretty much, uh, pretty much can just uh, I go to sleep, uh, just fine. I don't need any sound then. Okay, uh, so what, what are your feelings right now? What would you like to have occur in this conversation? Uh, what I would like to occur is for you to be able to show me a reason as to why you strongly believe that I would be more apt to be this certain type and not just because I have a preference of showing characteristics of types. Which, which uh, claims, which claim have I made about your type? What are the, remember I made two claims. So I, I understand what you're doing now is you're trying to, I'm, I'm I, not saying. I claimed you're not an say, INTP. And you're not an ENTP. I, I'm not. I'm not claiming. I'm not claiming anymore that you are claiming I'm any type because that was resolved. So all I would like to 
ask of you, if possible, is if you could provide me some sort of reason as to what you believe I am, and if you don't have don't know what you to are. Show, I will tell you why well, you're not an INTP or an ENTP, which is the claim I made. I will support that for you right now. Okay. Thanks, here. Okay. If um, Jody and Bob go to the store, then Mary will stay home. And if Mary stays home, Charles will come over and get his Mac on. However, if either Joe or Bob stays home, then Mary will go to the store and Charles will not get his Mac on. Now, Bob, it turns out, is on house arrest and has to stay right. home. What can we conclude? I won't be able to follow along with this because uh, um, I get too nervous because I'll have when I when I start to. Okay, let's try another one. If you let's try another, one. let's try a shorter one. Let's try a shorter one. Okay, let's try a shorter one. Okay, let's try a shorter one. Okay, let's try a shorter one. Only Egyptians make pyramids. I made a pyramid, therefore I'm Egyptian. Valid or invalid? Uh, no, invalid. All squirrels like baseball. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can you say that? Can you say that Egyptian one again? Actually, I just I felt like I heard it wrong. Only Egyptians build pyramids. I build pyramids, therefore I'm Egyptian. Valid or invalid? Uh, yeah, that would be valid then that you're an Egyptian if uh, Egyptians only make pyramids. Okay. Or, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, can you just say it again? I'm, I'm like I keep like hearing a different in my right, Only oh, Egyptian. Fine. Only Egyptians make pyramids. I make pyramids, therefore I'm Egyptian. Yes, that's true. Okay. All squirrels like baseball. Some baseball likers also enjoy cheese. Therefore, some squirrels enjoy cheese. Valid or invalid? All right. Say it one more time slowly. All squirrels like baseball. Some baseball likers also enjoy cheese. Therefore, some squirrels enjoy cheese. Valid or invalid? I have, a, I have such a hard time following along with this because, like, literally within a second, I'm, like, so scatterbrained. It just goes, like, directly off. All squirrels, all, or you said all squirrels like baseball. I got to write this down. All I'm squirrels sorry. like baseball. Some baseball likers also like cheese. Is necessary the case, therefore, that some squirrels like cheese? Some baseball likers like cheese. And then... Does that conclude, or then what was that last part? Therefore, some therefore some squirrels like cheese. Okay, so there are some people. I just I don't even think that is. Uh, okay, listen, listen, even... listen, listen. I've asked these sorts of questions of literally hundreds of people. I've also taught logic <coughs> and critical thinking to hundreds and hundreds of students. I've seen a range of skill levels on these kinds of questions, and, and you you are at the bottom end of that range of skill level, not the top. <laughs> it's because it's. No, it's not because of anything other than your personality type. And that's, that's the truth. I mean, it, it's just how it is. I've asked these questions of hundreds of adults and hundreds of children. Children. I am currently working with a sixth grade girl named Chloe. Oh, the, the answer is true. Yeah, the answer is true. Some, therefore, some squirrels like you. No, it's not. The answer is false. Oh. Oh, All squirrels like baseball. Some baseball likers also like cheese. That doesn't mean that the baseball likers who like cheese are among those who are also squirrels. It doesn't it doesn't logically follow. It just it's so I just, shit like that is like I'm overthinking. I'm like that's ti. It's it's just not that's just not if there are four if there it's are not a good way to determine it's it's not a good way to determine if someone is on a certain end of the spectrum because there's so many variables that go so, like, wait hold on a me, second me knowing, me knowing hold on a second Fox Bennett hold on I've asked these same questions 
to hundreds and hundreds of people. And I'm telling you, you're scoring at the bottom of the spectrum. What's invalid about that? Uh, well, say if uh, one in 100, say 1% 1 of people, so one in 100 people are apt to do this certain thing, then does that mean at least one person in like, does that mean if you take 100 random people that there's going to be one person in that? Essentially, no, it doesn't. I'm telling you, there's a bell curve of capacity as there is in any random sampling population of any random task, okay? It's a bell curve. Okay, so... You're at the bottom end of the bell curve on this skill. <laughs> I don't... Okay, I, I understand. I I can understand where you're going with that, but what I, what I know, what I'm confident of is understanding if someone is what somebody is saying is rational or if it's logical, because if someone's rational, if someone's like, okay, I oh. didn't see Jimmy at the gym. Okay, but Fox, listen to me. But listen, I've literally taught logic for years. Okay, that's in me and me like just list me taking that and then being like, okay, that that means because he taught logic, then that means that he is right. That would not be TI. No. Be, to say that therefore he understands what logic is and what is logical okay. better than I do okay. would be yeah. a good yeah. conclusion yeah. 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 to draw. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying that you don't know what it is. I'm just saying that I do understand TI. I do understand it and I am using it. I just right now it okay, just but feels weird. What you call TI okay though, what you call TI is not is not logic though. Okay. What you're referring to as TI is not logic. Yeah, I'm just I'm just reiterating what CS Joseph said because I from what I've seen, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's right okay. or not. So it was it was morning, when C S Joseph served that poop fresh. It was still garbage. When you reheat it and serve it back to me, it's even worse. Okay, so wait, so let's. So what we can conclude here is not that I have what I'm. What I'm assuming you could possibly be saying. I don't know what you're saying. Is that I have Ti polar? What I'm telling you is or, this definitive statement is absolutely true after being incredibly well qualified to tell you where you score on a spectrum of scores on exactly these kind of questions, having tested hundreds and hundreds of people, that objectively, literally, being a teacher, I'm telling you, I know how to assess students and I assess abilities and stuff, right? I'm telling you that literally, you score at the very bottom end of the bell curve on this scale set. Now, you might not want to call it TI. You might not want to call it TI. That's fine. Don't call it that. You should assess... Are you going to assess more? I'll assess more, sure. From I'll assess more. Okay, no more, no more like riddles. Okay, riddles. who is my mother's father's uh, no wife? I don't, I don't want to do any of these because I, I just, I, I'm not, I don't. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you're at the very bottom end of the bell curve. <laughs> this is what the I bottom end of the bell curve looks like. What? Why do I feel like I can understand? very complex things that are not like this. That because are, you're so illogical that you have an incredible inability to self-assess. That's why, that's the truth of it. FI tool, you're so illogical that you are unable to self-assess objectively. <laughs> I mean, I, look, what, what I just told you is indisputably so. so. You, you, you believe this, you believe that I'm illogical because I couldn't, because I did not answer your question correctly. I'm not saying you're illogical, and, okay? Remember my claim. On a test that tests um, logical skills, you are at the bottom of the bell curve. It's just, I, I, I get what you're saying. I do, I get what you're saying. But I believe your <sighs> overall intention could not be to, so what, what, so, so with Myers Briggs and everything, what is the, like, why do you want to help people learn? I don't want to help people learn whatever, okay? Why How? Why do you do this? What is your reasons for wanting to do this? Well, let's say I were making a model of my town. I'd want it, if it were to be a model of the town, I'd want it to be accurate. I'd want the KFC to be where the KFC is. I'd want mm -hmm. the dent stops to be where the dent stops is. Cognitive functions is a good idea that you came up with. But the map of it, in other words, the explanation of it, 
didn't withstand logical scrutiny, didn't withstand argumentational scrutiny. Remember, not only do I teach logic and critical thinking, I'm also a competition flow debate coach. So I know what withstands logical and so, argumentational scrutiny. Yeah, so if you, so if your objective is to then, let's say that from that base study that you said, I don't, I don't remember, it was like 500 or 600 people, if you've, if I'm on that bottom end of the spectrum, are you referring to logical, like, being logical or using TI as a whole, or are you saying based on that specific, based on that specific area? I'm saying habitually, just piped on. habitually, you don't resolve questions like this by parsing out the language for argumentational correctness. As you are not doing right now, as you are demonstrating right now, you habitually, repeatedly don't use logical parsing to determine what's correct. Because because you can when one knows because you can't do knows, it when, when, because when, as demonstrated when, you can't. No, when one knows that knowing is not parsing, when, knowing and deliberating are different things. If one is educated on the no. uh, inconsistencies of logic and understanding all that stuff, for you aren't. Who does? You're extremely you're uneducated you're, about it. You are not educated very, about it at all. You're very confident with something that is that you decided on very. I'm an expert at the subject. I teach it. I'm a competition flow debate coach with national champions under my belt. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. You are not using logic to argue this point. You are using your feelings. You are using your intuition. You're you're using your knowledge. Hold on. Using your knowledge, what you know, regardless of what you can prove. That's not logic. What you, so you're trying to convince me that because of all the stuff that you've won and all the credibility that you have, are you trying to tell me that that is logical, that like that is the why you are right? Because if so, then. No, I'm saying uh, the reason you're not logical is because you couldn't do anything that tested your logic. You failed every test. So many variables go into that. No, not very many variables. If P, then Q, therefore R. You know, it's like, it, um, not R, therefore what? It's not, it's not a lot of variables. It's just... It's P just, or uh, Q. I, I understand, I understand where you're coming from. You, but I think in order for you to get a broader, accurate range of the way you self-assess, if you're, well, like what you said, your objective and... I'm not self-assessing. ...to find the truth. I'm other assessing. Should, yeah, you should, you should be focused on... You should be focused on letting. So you're just here to tell me. You you're just be, here you to focus on letting like things be wrong. Okay, like, so listen to me. Listen to me. Why are you here? My my goal here is just to, I guess, honestly, kind of just resolve. No, the, to convince me that you're whatever you want to be. That's why you're here. I just want. I just want. To I just proved. I proved like, without any question whatsoever that you cannot do. Basic logic problems. You didn't prove. You proved with that one problem that you proved. You didn't. But prove you got every single problem. one wrong, and then you refuse to answer anymore. Well, Don't tell me you're, you, you're you're habitually using logic to solve situations or resolve questions. It's insane. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, uh, I just don't. I don't agree with the. Uh, You come to the conclusion too quick. Okay, but when I offer to test you more, you refuse. If you, oh no, oh, it's because it was. It's because it was something like that. I'm if testing you, your if logic. If I, if I, I'm testing I, your logical skill, I, your logical I, thinking. That's what I'm I, testing I, specifically. I, that's why it's that's I, what it is. It's logical thinking. I'm testing it. If, it's the subject of the, 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 the class I, I teach called I, logic. If I tell you my bit, like the variables are going to me, like. It doesn't matter if you get the fucking answers to the questions wrong on the math test and you don't know how to do the math. It does matter. No, no, look. If we're testing your ability to do addition and I tell you two plus two and you can't give me the answer, then the only conclusion we can draw is that you can't do addition. If I have if I have a fucking blindfold over my eye and I write down the wrong fucking answer because I can't see it, does that mean I don't know how to do it? Are you blindfolded? No, I am 
So oh, it's just saying all I'm okay, like I'll I'll get out of your uh, your hair in a second, but all I'm saying is if you want to get the if you want if your objective, like what you said, is not to help people, but to come to the truth, you have to not come to the conclusion so quick on things because if you come to the conclusion so quick on things, I the offer to test you more. Getting more things, I, I wanted to test you more. You refused. If you if you do it off the stream and you and you well, like if you just so you don't want to know what your I, test results are. You don't no, want I to don't, be tested just, to know what the results are. No, no, it's just you made me feel super stupid, so I just like. Oh, you see, that's I, the problem I, with like, Ti. So, this is the fucking problem with Ti. I, Everybody's got their ego attached to it. Just because you're not logical doesn't mean you're course, stupid. Just because you're not logical doesn't mean you're yeah, stupid. That's true. Of course, there's of course there's ego attached to it because I'm sure there's ego attached to what your claims are. No, there's right. not ego attached to my claims. There's not. not. That's the fucking problem. Sure. That's so irritating to me. Is there's not ego sure. attached. You don't think so? Oh, for fuck's sake. I am I'm sure. Not, I know. Sure. I sure. am I am sure. You know why? Because I stand here every day and face legitimate scrutiny all the time. It sounds nothing like your scrutiny. Uh well. And when I people are sure. right, I change my position accordingly. Well, I think because you've stand in the scrutiny and you've been in similar things where people are pressing you about that, then those things gone on in the past could then be uh, having to play into your subjectivity based on how you're viewing this situation right now, which is that in turn okay, making but it way the, different than then, be then everything's ever. subjective. Then everything's subjective because you're defining subjective as having limited information. Since nobody's omniscient, then everybody's subjective. I'm, I'm, so, I'm considering like I know I'm considering right now as if you are going into the ego and I knew I knew the debate I knew the debate tactics were going to come they're not tactics I, I am not debate I, tacticing you there are no well, tactics here well, I, well what do I mean by tactics I mean I'm telling just, you the truth it's it's just not it's Okay. Do you want me? Look, I also I, teach. I, I, hey, hold on, I, I, hold on. Listen to me. Listen for a second. Listen for a second. I also teach grammar. Would you like me to test your grammar knowledge and tell you where you score on that? It's irrelevant to Ti. Uh, no, the okay. But do you, but if I were to test your grammar, would you think that if I told you, hey, you're about a B student on grammar for about a you know a B high score, would you think that my assessment might be correct? Since I do teach English grammar, I teach sentence diagramming. Well, for TE users, uh, well, I would imagine they will heat that up. Um, they'll eat up that credibility. But for me, I have to see. I have to. I have to okay, but I, I, I did. I did miss, you did see. You failed to answer all the questions. Yeah, you got them all wrong. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I did. I did get them wrong. But I was trying to tell you that I don't feel com like if I was if. I would be honest with myself in this situation. If I'm like, I legitimately <coughs> fucking did not know this. <coughs> I get, I get into this feeling. Look, I, I get it. I, you, you both got no them wrong, and you refuse to be tested I, on it anymore. And then you accuse me of not using any actual data, but just my expertise. I'm pointing my expertise because you're you. you're questioning whether I'm defining logic correctly, and I teach the fucking subject. Don't don't get offended. This wasn't. Fine. I'm not offended. I, you're wrong. Is a difference, right? The thing is, the problem is here is this: you are stubbornly wrong. I'm not offended. I find that infuriating. With good cause, after all, you you're not. You're you doubling down when you're wrong. I pointed out shit period. that's indisputable, and you're ignoring what I'm saying. I'm listening to everything that you're saying, you're, but you're ignoring it. You're. You may be listening, but you're ignoring it. You're not responding just, on point. I'm. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a. Uh, I'm, I'm understanding everything that you're saying. I'm just not to. I'm just not. Uh, I just don't believe. I I don't see it as a uh, a good means to come to a conclusion. I see how I see how I was wrong. Like I see. Okay, but but listen. I see about what conclusion about what? Because so far, remember the only thing I've told you. The only thing I've told you is that on, the only thing I've told you so far is that on deductive reasoning kind of skills tests, 
You're at the bottom of the bell curve. And I've that justified that. that. Time, hold on. Hold on. It. Hold on. Let me make sure let me make sure we're on the same page about our claims, okay? My claim is this, that on those deductive reasoning problems, those logic test skills, that you are on the bottom of the bell curve. My justification for why you should trust this, listen, listen. My justification, which is what matters, for why you should trust this assessment is that I am actually a logic teacher. I've given these assessments, these same exact questions to hundreds of people. And so I can tell you where in that grouping you lie objectively. I'm not being subjective, which means I don't have an interest in this. In other words, I didn't want you to come here and be in the SFP. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm using a disinterested calculus like a referee does, not like a player in a game who uses an interested calculus. So I agree with everything you just said, but I don't know if you remember you just saying, but you were just saying how what what I what I was saying is that was not right about what you're saying it was just now you described it as if I would have no I agree with everything that you just said. How we were talking, how we were talking about it like a few minutes ago or however long it was, was that you were saying that people like I am on the Lower end of the spectrum. What no, I'm saying you specifically. You didn't say, you didn't say the test. You specifically the test. on the lower end of the spectrum of those logic questions. Yes. No, you you didn't say the logic questions. You were saying as some like some a user of logic. I don't remember the exact word. Yes, but it was in terms of logical, logical thinking. thinking. Yes, in terms of logical because thinking skills. Yes, in terms of logical thinking skills, you are at the bottom end of the spectrum. That's yes. what that test. That's and I agree and I agree with what you're saying with the test. But I don't know if you meant to, or if you, or if now you're changing the words. But I'm not saying I'm not saying anything. All I know is that a few minutes ago, you were saying you were attributing that test to outside of the test, and I was, and that's that's the only reason why I'm talking. I would have, we wouldn't be talking about this. No, if I, I pointed like out. That. So that's no. I, listen, all I did was point out that that in fact I'm not rushing to judgment. That you refuse to take more test questions. And then you challenged whether or not those test questions are a meaningful way to test the thing that I say that they're testing. I defended against that claim by pointing out that I should know this because I do, in fact, teach the fucking subject. And then you've avoided those that the fact that that resolves the matter ever since. Yeah, because it's not it's not uh, it doesn't resolve it logically. It's only uh, more probable to resolve it. OK, remember, the claim I'm making is established by empirics not by logic. Namely, mm -hmm. you are literally at the bottom end of the spectrum of scores on these sort of things. I've tested hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. I'm not lying yeah. to you. Or two, two of the questions, yeah. No, you got big, all of them pretty wrong. Pretty easy you got all of them wrong, and you won't let me ask you more. Two. And you won't let me ask you more. Well, okay, what I was just saying is you asked me two of them, and I asked you more than two. Uh, I asked you four, I think, and you got them all wrong, and you won't let I mean, me ask you more. Well, which ones are we talking about prior before the uh, the squirrel and uh, the one before that with the... Uh, okay, okay. Look, do you want me to ask you more questions? No. Then why are you complaining about me asking too few? Well, because I'm just saying is you're, you're trying to make it sound like... Okay, I'm at the so bottom it, of if in fact... I just answered 100 questions. If in like fact... If in fact... So if, in mind. fact, I'm wrong because my data <laughs> sample is too small and you care about it being correct, <laughs> then you'd offer to increase the size of the data sample. And the reason you say you don't want to do that is because I made you feel stupid. You did. I will agree. You made me feel stupid, but that wasn't the, that wasn't, that wasn't the sole reason. It's because you were apt to say I was on the bottom end of the spectrum from such a small sample size when... Okay, well, let's increase people, the sample size then. Me, well, then I have to... Then I'm, then I'm in your frame and I'm playing your game then. Yes, the game is, I am a teacher of logic. I'm assessing your ability to use logical thinking skills. That's the game. It's, that, that's the game. It's called, find out the truth about yourself. Yeah, it's... Um, I get, I get it. I get everything you're saying. Um, to me, and I thank, I thank you for your time. I'm not. Uh, it's just. 
I know. Credit, the, 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 credit, the credibility, I'm just not like, I don't, don't take this in any way. I think, I think you're a cool ass dude. I mean, I've established my credibility but, beyond any any be reasonable person's doubt. But your, your credit, like, to me, how I see your credibility now, it's just I'm not apt to see it the same as I did before. So it's, I'm not good. I'm just wasting your time and I'm wasting my time because now, even if I, whatever I do, get an opinion based on what I just saw through the past few minutes, I don't know, like 20 minutes or whatever, then I'm not. I'm not likely to even consider any of that because of so many things that were not logical because then I see that as I'm not willing to take this opinion into account because like uh, uh, boy, you're right, well, I'm not saying you lied about anything. I'm just saying like in that kind of concept. Of okay. All right. And your words mean nothing. Yeah. All right. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Eric. I'm still going to watch your videos, though. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. I, I don't hold any grudges. I don't get mad. I'm not mad yeah, at you. I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still saying subscribe. I'm still, I'm still All right, like thank videos, you. Like I appreciate that. Are. You're a great person. You know, and I got to say, you have dealt with this. I've had this exchange many times. You've dealt with it with more class than anybody that I've had this exchange with before. And you deserve full props for that. You dealt with it with a lot more class than I dealt with it. And you deserve props mm -hmm. for that. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Right. Take That's care. True. I'm still staying subscribed. Right on. Right. Rock on. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's the truth. You know, he was extremely classy about that whole thing. Extremely classy. And I really wasn't because uh, it's a bit of an FI, FI failure on my part. FE -E failure as well, I guess. But uh, I assume that I have to have the same argument. But he's a really classy guy and he didn't deserve me. Uh, being such a douche. I'm sorry for that. All right, that's it. Have a nice evening. Unless you got something to say. No, I, I mean, I don't know. I wish we didn't have to stop. We don't have to, but I, I had FI all of a sudden. Oh, um, okay. But it'll go away in a second. It, no, it's all right. No, I don't necessarily want to stop. I want my, I want my crayfish to crawl into a special place. Aww. I love my crayfish. He's so cute. I love our crayfish too. I know. He was so very cordial at the end of the call, too. It feels terrible. Why? Because it's like if I pull her, you know, you realize you're a douchebag too late. It's frustrating. No, I'm not going to time you out again, Jeff Shaw. I've, I've spent the all the uh, irritation energy I have. I'm done with it at the moment. That, uh, you know, it's like, if I were a smarter person, I'd go jogging instead of I'm in an irritated mood or something, instead of going online and regretting taking out my frustration on people. Time and be nice to Jeff Shaw. Please. You know, let me be the only center tonight. Wouldn't that be nice? Winston's mom was Eric your human and everyone got a bit frustrated. It's okay. I mean like I was getting frustrated too. I just wanted him to stop talking. And see, I wasn't allowed to make that point at any point either. I was trying to make the point that this is a problem. Everyone's got their ego attached to T.I. Everybody thinks T.I. means smart. T.I. doesn't, doesn't mean it. smart. It does mean correct though. You know, it's like so... 
I was, I was not nice. I mean, he. I was my normal nice. bad person self. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. Sometimes I just get pissy and I just like, yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't it in your tri type? I mean, hate. it's eight. Yeah. Right. He doesn't want to have. He doesn't want to have more. More incompetence at something display. But what I try to make the point of is we need to stop thinking TI is intelligence. I mean, if you watch me try to do anything, it was really it's it's a disaster. You know, it's like the, the thing is here we are on the internet and all we do is talk in words and we're all about the map. And of course, if you're in map town talking about maps with map makers in the map room, then and you come in with, I got a bucket of dirt from the territory, then the map people are going to be like, don't get that dirt all over the place. But there's more to life than the maps and the map rooms and the map makers, right? And it's it's uh, it's not correct to say that intelligence is being good at making correct. maps. Correct. That's not correct to say that intelligence is being good at making maps. Intelligence is a, is a broadly, this broad thing. It involves lots of different things. It is things. a broad thing. It means only women can have it. For broads. Oh, it is for broads. It's only for broads. That word hasn't been used in a while. I'm glad you brought it yeah, back. Yeah, it's time to start bringing back broads. Occasionally you see it, but, uh, you Thank know, it really needs to catch fire. Thank you for sticking around for the stream. I appreciate it. This broad does. You're welcome, darling. I'm going to have, if it's not already gone, the last tip of pea bird to kind of settle my stomach and then maybe take a time or two to figure out her mm. I'll be here. So, um, like, even though I didn't say anything during that, uh, you know, like I was, I was starting to be like, dude. I mean, it wasn't comfortable. I, you know. I just, it's, it is uncomfortable when, like, I don't know. People don't like seeing the, their polar, I guess. I don't know. No, the guy, I felt like the guy was being, like, a little annoying. Thanks, Winston's mom. Like, I knew I was on camera, too. Like, I knew the guy was watching, so I wasn't going to be making, like, many facial expressions. But, uh, I, like, it's, it's, uh, Well, like, nerves are definitely part of it. I'm so proud Oops. of you, Rachel. Thanks. You know why? Why? You finished the last bit of the cute. Oh, thank you. Rachel's growing up. She's not saving the last bit of everything for me. That Effie tool is starting to, starting to pull back a little bit. And I appreciate that. Good job, Rachel. Thank you. The beginning of the relationship, we both did it. <laughs> there would there would never be a we never finish anything. Anything. There would always be a piece left of everything. Mm -hmm. <sighs> was that difficult for you, Rachel? It probably was, huh? Um, no. To listen to. So, like, people think it's difficult for me, but I live with you. That's true. <laughs> it's. 
<laughs> it just happened to be on a night where you were a little on edge as you were. So, right. I mean. Like, and I was. We were I guess, talking about yeah, the SFPs this afternoon, you know? The thing is, I was slightly snappish. I wasn't even really snappish with you, but. Um, oh. Earlier, <laughs> you know? Uh, it was. It, it was uh, a reminder that, like, I have to be careful because Effie Tool really wants to accommodate, and uh, I don't ever want Rachel and I to have a relationship where Rachel feels like she has to snap too, you know? Hello. Oh. I freaking hate that shit. That's that's Alpha Quarter's great virtue. <laughs> it's not always manifest, but no, it is. I mean, like I can think of a specific ISFJ who didn't have that attitude at all. <laughs> but um, um, I think it's more of an NTP thing. E ESFJ also, Candace may not have um wanted me to snap too exactly, but she did want me to be working towards meeting her vision more on an ongoing basis, you know? Yeah, I totally know what it's like. Well, says, Mom, that's not what happened tonight. I came in with a bad attitude. Or not a bad attitude, but a, a fighty attitude. And now I've I shot my fight load, you know? Yeah. And now I'm cool again. So basically, I I worked out my mental health problems on that guy. <laughs> Samantha Laffer, I love your innocence in typology. We just apologize. Uh, I don't have anything to apologize for. I already acknowledged. I think you I already did. did. I think I already did apologize. You did. I don't really have anything to apologize for. Uh, what I do. What I feel like apologizing for anyway, even though I don't feel I need to, is that I could have behaved in a much more classy fashion. But I didn't wrong him in any way. Um, I could have been more civil. He was a lot more civil than I. And he set the tone. Uh, he, he demonstrated the kind of tone I would like to maintain more. Um, when I come in with a fighty attitude and somebody puts themselves up and says, I'm here to spar with you. Even if they're, that's, that's what I interpret it as, even if they're not here to spar, right? It's like, they're just here to have a talk, and I go, get in the ring, put on the gloves. So it's like, I need to, it, I need to, I'm not as bad at that as I used to be. But um, it's still something I need to work on. But it's almost like, it's painful because the truth from your words will never be heard. Okay, so Jeff Shaw, this is going to get you a timeout. This kind of snarky bullshit. I did not thrash him based on my confusion. I thrashed him being up because I was on a bad, had a bad attitude. You know, I was in a fighting mood. I was not confused about anything. If you listen to that conversation seriously and thought I was confused, then you're very confused. I mean, I don't think does anybody else here think that I, that the reason I was angry at him is because I was confused. The Queen's Gambit has a conspiracy theory about me. <laughs> I, I'm dying to hear it. Thank I, you, Skaggy. I, I really want to know what it is. What's the conspiracy theory? I mean, I, I'd like to know what it is. Yeah, I would like to know what the conspiracy is, too. Just because I didn't even think that you were really, like, on that guy's mind anymore. Did I thank you? My bad. I unthank you. Um. Oh, I thanked him because uh, he said one was Eric confused. Oh, she's giving me a... Thank you. That's yeah, what I'm talking you. about. Like that kind of. Yeah, stuff. that kind of. 
And, uh, thank you, gentlemen. You were so nice. He thinks that me, C.S. Joseph, and Megan Lavota are all secretly collaborating to intentionally mistype people so you can get money from people. Megan Lavota, he went that low. <sighs> Poor Megan Lavota. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the reality, Rachel. If there's anybody in that group who's got something shady going on, it's that Megan Lavota. Yeah. She is one. I think she's she smuggling so. blood diamonds on the side. I do too. That's how she gets her fans. <laughs> I mean, secretly collaborating. <sighs> I mean, I get it kind of, there's a sort of NI thing, like, I've had this too. C.S. Joseph can't possibly be that wrong and just not any concept of it, except... He really is. I, I see I see my dad have this weird NI polar thing sometimes, too. I'm trying to get a point across, you know, like, like the thing earlier, right? Yeah. And when I finally do get it across, he's like, yeah, I get it. It doesn't. And it's like, okay, but. No, you don't. No, he does at that point, but he doesn't get, he doesn't get why, why I said it. Right? Like, he doesn't get how it resolves something that was in question or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. He probably just feels attacked on his That's power. That's the only time. Yo. I need to stop Eric, doing that. You're right, though, about. Um, like, well, I did apologize actually already. So, yeah, he did. I said, so, um, oh, is he, he, he continuing to make type police? Hilarious. What? I he better not be using my song. If he's using my, I told him, you know, if he's using my song, I'm gonna fucking copyright it. Hell guys. no. So, what? He types people for free. No, he type police. He makes type police. Oh, 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 Using Voltology. I think he's retyped himself like three or four times now. Mm -hmm. I have a screenshot to prove that's what he thinks. Wow. Why does he watch a lot of my streams? Yes, Samantha Laffer, he was correct. He did get all the questions wrong. He's T.I. Bowler. Uh, I mean... I wanted to... I, there were times I wanted to... It was very... That, that's you, the end of it. You can have... You can have... T channels have the same name. You can have video, titles of videos have the same name. I don't... I'm not trying to enforce type police. If I wanted to, I would have to register the trademark and then make an effort to, to enforce it. Um, I could do that. It might be worth doing, um, but uh, <clears throat> I haven't yet, and so it's perfectly within his prerogative to choose to to do that. Um, but if he uses my song, on the other hand, that's a different matter because that's my copyrighted material, and he can't use it. Sky Gear, uh, I have the same theory too. I mean, I don't so know. It's a little it, it's, scary. He's what you'd call a stalker. Yeah, it's a little scary. I'm not answering more riddles, but I just asked, who's your mother's father's husband or wife? Who's your mother's father's wife? It's not a, not a very big genealogy question. S-I, Michael B.N. S-I-F-I. Oh, is that why my sister has her like a, a baby doll that she sleeps with still? Uh, yeah, That's probably. Fun fact: I used to hide that baby doll on her so that we would get extra time for before sleep. I don't want to go to sleep. You want to know what's an excellent example of NI pattern recognition? Yes. Jeff Shaw has figured out the pattern. If he says thinly veiled douchebaggy shit, someone's going to time him out. He correctly predicted that this time as well <laughs> is thinly veiled douchebaggy shit. 
We're getting tongue tied. That is NI Connections. Congratulations, Jeff Shaw. Great NI, Jeff Shaw. Good job. You are winning the intuition game. Mm -hmm. Um. From batshit insane but impressively detailed system with 15,000 types. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I here, here's one of the challenges of dealing with other individuals that you encounter in the world. Um, all over my hand, uh, why don't you, do you have a, a link to the, the screenshot yeah. you want to? You can put it there. I'd like to see too. Um, well, okay. So here's the thing, Michael B. N. I've this is just observationally. INFPs like to rewatch pieces of media again and again. That would be FI DOM, third slot SI. Uh, SI DOMs like to watch the same kind of media, typically, which is a few different kinds of things. True. Crime drama things, like, not drama, but like real real crime, like uh, dead, dead body investigation, 72 hours. Investigation discovery, shit like that. They also like to watch a period piece shit, like mid-80s, people dressed up in costumes, like PPS stuff, they uh, they like to watch uh, like Dr. Phil and stuff. Uh, this is if you're their chicks, I guess. What a Galenko typer. Yeah, what did Galenko typer? That's that's an interesting. Uh, oh yeah, email it to me. Don't you have Google Photos all over? Like, God, you fucking TV polar. You're younger than me. You should be more tech savvy than me. But no, thanks a lot for being TE polar. I guess it shows you what matters more. Why do INFPs rewatch? I've observed that. I don't know if it's true generally for INFPs. I've observed sure. it in a couple of INFPs. Sorry. But it may have been specific to them, and one of them may have been an ISFP. No, I, I don't mind pronouncing it correctly. I correct people when they spell my name wrong, so, so what, Samantha Lafer it is for me. I'm going to call you Sa. Sala. I'm going to call you Sama. Sama. Samantha. Samantha, Samantha. Lafer. That sounds more Lefeu. French. Samantha Lafer. Oh, I like that a lot. You should go by that from now on. Yeah. Hello, my name is Samantha Lafer. What? Samantha Lafer. Oh, you mean Samantha La Lafer? No, I mean Samantha. 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 Polar is a bitch, Oliver Linehan. Thank you very much for saying words that I don't have. Words that are true. Yes. That are true and just in fine and special and that you have. You know what I want to do a favor for? I want to do a favor for Pepe Le Pew. I want to invite him over to sexually harass me. Um, you know what's weird? I promise I won't won't tell on him or anything. I won't bust his chops. He can. Oh, they just you know, I thought that was so. It, I know this is weird, but I thought it was endearing. I don't know why. As well, a kid, I'm like. It's not like he ever successfully raped the cat. No. It was just the hilarity of continual attempted. Yes, his, his <laughs> over emotional gestures. But I want Pepe to be able to know that. Due to the connections I've made between him and me via our friend, our mutual friend, uh, Skunky Brewster. Look, 
Hey, Jeff Shaw, I don't want to fucking argue with you, man. And you're and I shit. Okay. You're very insecure attack. Very insecure your tactics. Not HP ish, actually. I don't like your willingness to deflect and be a man of debate. What I mean, let me finish reading out loud. What did what you did to this guy and now deflect and project is a morning exercise you need. Is a morning exercise I need? Okay, you need to chill the fuck out, dude. <laughs> Seriously. It's like, I'm, I, I, you, got, you, talk, you got turned out again, but now you got my attention again for a few seconds. And I successfully totally forget about your nonsense and back again. Uh, hi, Jeebus. How are you doing? Uh, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, can you begin with cat calling and escalate to uh, groping? Groping and fondling? You can fondle my wrists and you can grope my ankles. Oh, nice. <laughs> What's the worst polar function to have? SE is my opinion, if I have to answer the question. You said that before. You have said that before. 18 is the most tragic. Yeah. TE polar can get by by getting being nice to other people and getting them to do things for them. But yeah. uh, you I know think the bar it's not the reason I feel guilty for getting mad is high volatility or irritability. First of all, just because in this instance I came in irritable, if acknowledged that I came in irritable, is not a reason to think that I have high volatility irritability. People with low volatility irritability sometimes still are irritable. Mm -hmm. Second, the fact that I'm irritated is not necessarily linked to my personality. It could be linked to things irritating me. For example, when I scratch my arm, it's sometimes because I feel like scratching my arm. Sometimes it's because it's very itchy because I have poison oak. So when you say, ah, the reason you're doing this is because you have, you're somebody who possesses high arm scratchiness. You're ignoring the fact that there's a third factor, right? In other words, I'm going to be more irritated by irritating things than by things that are not irritating. If I am continually plastered in the face of all irritating things, that's one way one can approach life. And it may be, in fact, the most desirable way, maybe the most successful way or whatever. But to say that I possess a trait of high volatility or irritability is to say that essentially there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with my response. Tonight, I wish I hadn't come in so uh, irritable. Because it caused me to deal with a conversation that I should have dealt with in a more classy fashion, in a less classy fashion than I should have. I mean, you know. Let's see this fun thing. A tactic by whom? So Queen's Gambit says, I really do believe it's a tactic in this community to send someone to Lavota, then Eric, then Calypso, then Chase, etc. They all know each other and are profiting off the confusion this creates. If you've noticed, all they have to offer are stereotypes. You know, is way too ambiguous to spin down type with, especially later in life when our fixation is not the dominant energy is more evenly distributed through our conscious processes. I mean, the funny thing about that that claim right there is every time somebody makes some stupid-ass fucking claim like that, I say, have you seen the video of me at 17 years old? Yeah. They definitely haven't. Um, funny that it came from... The question came from... Margaret Barger? Yeah. Margaret Barger? Margaret Barger, yeah. She might be INFP. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Her TI is too good for ENFP. 
but her, you know, I've seen that on an ISV before and an INFP before. This refusal to ever come and settle on a tie because any tool INT, INTP can be like that. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen one, what I think was an INTP before. I think she's yeah. not an INTP, she might be an I, INFP. Both of them might be INFPs. They, I think they're INTPs, which is why they can never settle on it because their FI is not conscious enough. So, um, it's, Jesus, this is the second case of this disorder I've seen, which is called any tool run them up. So, um, when did you did you type Spacey as INTP? Yeah. Was he? Did he? Like, have any pushback or like was like confused at all or like? Uh, yeah, for a little bit, but you know, once he actually came out to mm -hmm. LA and worked with me and mm -hmm. saw me, did mm -hmm. the test with me, sat next to me, actually did it, and had his own SI experience. Yeah. He said, "You know what? In fact, I, I could cut videos of it. You know what? Wow. I had my doubts, but Eric is completely wow. right. Wow! I, I could find lots of video cuts of that. Wow! Show. I had no idea that INTPs could be like that. Well, the thing is, they have to come to that conclusion on their own. You're never going to convince them of anything." Even if you're super logical and bright, you'll just uh, you get them to withhold judgment until they can further negate. You know. Mm -hmm. Jeff Shaw. I have to say, I'm really happy with this weed. I'm really happy with Mary James. I think that every time we've gone there, we've had a good bud tenders, which I seriously respect. I want to address this Jeff Shaw thing here. Uh -huh. um, so the thing is, it would seem to me that Jeff Shaw's primary goal is to, I guess, take me down a notch. Yeah. Does that seem accurate? Yeah. I don't get it, though. Because I don't feel like I'm... I'm, uh... really projecting as... as superior or, you know, not subject to critique or something like that. It's just that Jeff Shaw doesn't make any real critiques. He just says things like... You know, it's a, a, a morning lesson you need or something. What the fuck? Yeah, the metaphor. Yeah. And it's like, well, like I said so many times before, if you have a lesson to teach me, then just say what it is. I'm not unwilling to learn things. Yeah. That's, that's the weird thing about it. It's not like I'm unwilling to learn. But it's like, you're not, it's almost like you're not doing it his way. He, like, sees your intelligence, but, like, he just is in denial that you're doing it, like, the right way, or that he's, it's like, it's like, almost he's, like, upset that you were right about things. It's strange. I don't know. Um... If Jeff Shaw was Jeffree Star in disguise, that would be really interesting. But I don't think so. I'm gonna play a song on the guitar now. Cool. That's real, Vanessa. I mean, like... I try to find explanations for why people behave. Explanations make some sense to me, but they all escape. Cause I find reasons that don't root in justifications Eminently confusing Not to say my own decision 
But based on logical analysis, why that would be engaging in a rational act of fallacy. But rather, at least I'm objective about what I'm saying most of the time, or at least I attempt always to be. Now I know sometimes. Circumstances outside the current form and what we talking about can influence the most placid men and make them strange out. Well, I wonder. People dislike me so. I'm not so awful though. I guess I'm much too proud because I know that I'm so loud and that I'm one of the whole crowd of people who prioritize humility above all else. So I sit condemned. Beautiful. Thanks, Charlie. Welcome. You get into It's called your Woe Is Me. You get into your four. Pretty whiny song. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pretty whiny one. Though. Right? That's four. you a bad gambler. <laughs> <laughs> 
And always feel free to sing along anytime you want to escape. No, hold back. If I don't like something, I'll be like, eh. Sure, that's true. <laughs> I won't be able to help myself. But I see make... it in your face. I see it even before you make a huff. I see it in your face. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a thought. He's got a good idea for a name changing business. Thinking now about what he'll call Christmas. When they hire his firm to change that name. Do we thought he took a chance enough. Do we turn to the work or left her up? Each get back to it eventually. The empire up. And his plans would interrupt all the work that started off so hopefully. When I was buying his back on his business, thinking of changing fact that it's a list that's so round of all the people that shout his name. great job that's like su surprisingly people don't understand that what she just did is surprisingly difficult to do thanks bae mm -hmm. see see it's just to seven eight for nature it's a little volume sometimes you get a fly off the handle let's sing um I I'm so too. sad. Okay. We'll sing together. If you can play that and sing, that's fine. If you can't, that's fine. I don't too. think I've ever. Oh, I, I'm going to try. It, it, you know, it depends on the person. For me, I find my um, drumming is much more sound if I'm singing along with it, even if I can't. It's like I'm the only one who can hear my singing or whatever. But. Um, other people may, but it depends how complicated the beat like, is. Okay. I, so, like, I can't do it with complicated beats necessarily unless I'm singing the beat, right? But even then, that helps. So, it may be the case for you too that singing the words of the song and the song helps you with the beat, or it may be the opposite because you don't seem to have any problem with steady. <coughs> <normally. coughs> uh, okay, what am I looking up here? Set list. The document known as Set List Bobet List. That's a great name. Mm -hmm. That's where I have all these things compiled. All the ones that I have figured out anyway. Okay. Hmm. Um, let me do them, yeah. Let me do, yeah. Mm, that's a little small. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. 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 Whatever. There. Now, this part here, because you get the last bit. I'm going to get small like this. <clears throat> okay, so after we get your golden calf, we go here. Okay? Okay. Where's golden calf? Okay, okay. Cool. See it. Okay, so now we'll just go here. I'm sure who wants to be the dad, okay? Instead. I made it a little okay, bit bigger. I see it. There. So who wants to be the dad have it all since all right, here we go. Big delay there. Sorry everybody for the big delay which set up this song. Just brooding here won't do. <laughs> Let's start over. <coughs> brooding here won't do any good. The brooding's more and more my style. I think the cheery ways of standing where we stood. Cause I've been stuck here a while. That's despite a natural selfishness. in the gut become a fist as all my visions come undone. I tried to stand distracted and dream the afternoon away, but happy new realities are breaking every day, and for a bit I am out of it. For reasons still unchecked, but still I need to get out of me. So ready to just get mad. I seek the simple ways of living like a kid. Cause who wants to be the dad? Have we lost our sense of scope and scale? Our capacity to laugh? The sense to know when not to will? And how to tip the golden calf? I tried to stream, distract, and dream the afternoon away, but every new reality is burned down on every day, and for a bit, I am out of it, for reasons still unsaid, but still I need to get out of me, what's inside my head?
That's good. We're, that we're, we're getting it done. Yeah, yeah. You know, Aren't we? It's taking some practice, but we're getting it. Um, that last part, I'm sorry. You know, when, yeah. When I get the singing part down, that'll be good. You know. Yeah. Go back and forth like that. It would be really. Yeah. I like it. Me too. Okay, let's try singing this song. Um, if you want to uh, try singing every second, every other line of the yellows. Okay. That'd be fine. So I'll go, what's the matter with Chad? Is, is he terribly bad? <laughs> Let's give it a shot. What's the matter with Chad? Is he terribly bad? Is he very like Dan? Who's terrible, man? Is he sort of like Jill? Who can't pay your bill? Or rather like Jack? What's the matter with Jill? Will she know what to do? If they bring attitude, will she show ingenuity? She talks about you. You go percussion on this one. I'll try. Too much noise in the data stream. 
Try this song. This is fun. We need percussion. Sure, whatever you want to do. Those high parts I can't hit. You're a good singer for the song. Thanks. I I play. I'm a white boy. Yay! Now you play percussion. Okay. Well. Thumbing in the kicking cans and won't do an answer good. 
Okay. Good, I'm so glad. Let's try this. You want to sing? Okay. Or whatever you want to do. No, I do. Doing this wrong Cause 
pretty good job of it. Dang. So, yeah, that's like the first time I've ever heard you saying it. I'm glad we're getting this good practicing then. Yeah, it's really good practice. But now I'm going to play Matter of Mood. I'm going to play the oh. percussion you're welcome to. Okay. I, I think I'm going to take a bomb. Sure. You, I know. You can add to the song by coughing. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's totally fine. I just play. When I was younger, it seemed that everything gleamed. I don't know what happened to me, but I've lost that sense of urgency. And I don't think that I'll ever see. It again. If you follow my lead, you'll discover I'm loster than you, and you'll want to know the way to get back out to wherever it was you thought you knew. And tomorrow will be just like today. I'll be lost then too. It's a matter of mood as much as a matter of will. And the things I do in the direction I point to still see a part of me. I wonder if I'll ever see them again. Bum ba dun da ba di 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 ba ba di da ba ba di. Ba ba di da ba di 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 da ba ba da da ba ba di. That was a pretty good rendition of that one. Yeah. Please pull your bar. Don't wait. Oh, I did. Oh, you did. Well, okay. I did. That's not hard to see. No, I did good in sections. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, he came here with her. And what's the big problem that you can't endure? It seems so sure you're not appropriate claiming the blank thing that's got. Despite getting caught, he's, he's got me in frame for him. Straight for him. Going to the end of the My voice is shot. I'm done I'm playing right now. My voice is as shot as pot shot with a shotgun a lot. 
Wow, somebody gave us twenty dollars. Thank oh, you. Oh wow, thank you. thank you. Thank you, Sean Neil. Appreciate it. Appreciate it much. Very kind of you. So my butt is singing better than my voice right now. Mm. <laughs> uh, I just want to mention, remember the important thing. Most important to remember. You don't have to wear a mask in the movie theater as long as you buy concessions. Yes. Okay? That's a big takeaway. Uh, because if you're eating popcorn and drinking sodas, then that keeps your mouth COVID safe. You don't need the mask. That provides the mask. Okay? Yeah. We were able to. But if, you, if, in fact, you are somebody who's not purchased concessions, then you need to wear a mask throughout the entire film. Important to note this. How's the popcorn? It was kind of footy. Okay. It, well, it made my fingers smell like my feet. Oh, that's weird. That's not good. <laughs> but I still liked it. Okay. I just thought I noted that in the movie. Why do my fingers smell like my feet? Oh, it's my that feet big butter. It's the big butter, right? Where's our buddy? He out about? Where are you? Lulu. I bet you he's in his little spot. He's back in his spot. I want to look at the flashlight. Where's the flashlight? Oh no. I've lost it again. It's just what I do, that's how I roll. I'm always be losing the flashlights. Basically, you can pay the theater to not wear a mask. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, Oliver Line Hand. That's very Astute of you. Uh, if, he, if he's back there, I don't see him. Can I see? Yeah. Okay. There are various spaces that it could be right now. It could be in the shell. It could, in theory, even be in here. It could. You see me in there? I know. Is he in a little pot? You look in there as a pot. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we see. Oh. Be in the top thing. Well, he read. But, um, I'll, I'll help you there. Thank you. Or you might just be hidden. You could be hidden right here. Right? He could be back up in the show, like you said. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, good. That's where I wanted to be. He just needs to walk around a little bit more and he can find the bridge. Okay, so just to explain to everybody, I've noticed that Lee Luther Lobster, our little crayfish guy, mm -hmm. he is since I messed with the um since I messed with the tank the other day and tried to rearrange things to make it better for him, he's been anxious. He wants to get out of the tank, it looks like. He's trying to climb up. So what we did today, what I did, and um, Rachel and I talked about it beforehand, is uh, we made a a little floating, sort of floating, uh, suspended 
nook that just he could get to. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like. You're going to say, wow, Eric, that looks terrible. <laughs> it was shut up. I'm going to say. So be prepared for that. Oh, so close. There you go. Sorry for not being TE helpful. That's okay, Dora. You know that as a southern gentleman, I would be shocked and appalled if a lovely lady like yourself would trouble her pretty head about such a banal matter. I am a southern gentleman after all. True. Okay, so I'll take this off of this. So I can really show you the wonder and majesty of my creation. Yeah, so if you can see the two things sticking out from the top. Can you go over there and wiggle the stick a little bit? Like push the stick around? No, no, not that stick, the metal stick. This is this thing, right? It's got dirt and stick. Okay, thank you. It's got dirt and sticks and stuff in it. And it's got a little bridge to get there. It's inside the tank. A wooden bridge. Mm -hmm. And he was by it. And right he was over by the bridge, but I wanted to climb up the bridge to a little, a little place I made for him. <laughs> that that is definitely the case here. It's like you're technically hanging out with someone, but you don't have to talk to them. Very much the case here at Talking Like Fans. Yeah. You are hanging out with us, but you do not have to talk with us. No. And you can if you want to. Yeah, exactly. Because as you see, we spend plenty of time not talking to you. <laughs> Okay. Holy Lou. Uh, I think let's wrap this up now. That's a long live stream. Three, eight, three hours and 23 minutes. No, it does want to go up. It has places to hide in. We've got lots of places to hide in. Yeah. The thing about that bucket there is no fish can get into it, and it's got nothing but life. It's got nothing but places to hide under, you know, in there. Got sticks and rocks and dirt. Okay, so if, if my concern is this, Lilu has plenty of places to hide if he's in a normal state of being. But I'm concerned that he may be about to molt, and so I want to give him a special molting area. And so hopefully that's what I've done. All right, thank you everybody. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. <laughs>